What up, everybody? Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. This episode is brought to you by ButcherBox. I love ButcherBox. Why? Because they make meat happen at my home. I mean, you don't have to. If you stop the explanation there, it would still be great, but I'm not going to. It can be really hard to find great 100% grass-fed beef, free-range organic chicken, heritage breed pork or wild-caught salmon at a regular grocery store. You can go to a specialized butcher, but you're going to pay for it, and it means a second stop from the regular store. Butcher Box they've got you covered. They believe everyone deserves high quality, humanely sourced meat. It couldn't be easier. You just sign up, select your box, and then they ship it right to your door every month. And when you sign up right now, you get their steak sampler with six grass-fed, grass-finished steaks, because the best steak night is free steak night. Listen, I've used ButcherBox. They've sent me steak. They have sent me chicken. They've sent me sausages in the past and pork. They've sent me fish. It's all been really good. It's a curated selection of high quality meat delivered right to my house. Each box has nine to 11 pounds of meat, enough for 24 individual meals, packed fresh, fresh, shipped, frozen, and vacuum sealed so it stays that way. I can either customize my own box, which I've done, or I go with one of their pre-mixed ones. Either way, I can get exactly what I want. Now, for a limited time, new members are going to get six free, that's F-R-E-E, free, grass-fed, grass-finished steaks when they go to butcherbox.com slash tire. Very easy. Butcherbox.com slash tire. That's two New York strips and four top sirloins added to your first box absolutely free. This offer is only good through Cyber Monday. That's six grass-fed, grass-finished steaks for free in your first box at butcherbox.com slash tire. That's butcherbox.com slash tire. Um, you guys have probably, especially if you follow me on Instagram at The Smoking Tire, you've probably heard about my new show, Sorted, uh, brought to you by our friends at Auto Tempest, and uh, I host it with Rob Ferretti and Amelia Hartford and Tanner Faust. It is a tuner car shootout show. We are airing the East Coast regional episodes right now, followed by the West Coast regional episodes, and I'm about to go to Miami to film the head-to-head uh, season one winner episode which I'm very excited to do. You can catch all the episodes as well as learn about all the cars, the hosts, and I think even get merch at sortedornot.com. S-O-R-T-E-D-O-R-N-O-T.com. Sortedornot.com. Watch my new show. It's fun. The other hosts are fun. It has actual production value, unlike one takes. We had a sound guy. We broke cars. We got racetracks. We were hot. I was sweaty. Amelia went, wee! And then I revved a super at 10,000 RPM. It was de-fucking-lightful, folks. Sortedornot.com. It's my new show. You should watch it. And of course, if you watch Sorted, you're going to see me wearing Dylan Optics sunglasses. It's the official eyewear of the Smoke and Tire podcast. Dylan is just, they're such good glasses. I've been wearing them for 10 years now. It's been a full 10 years. The matte finish lenses aren't just a look. Although if you happen to wear glasses on television, they don't reflect the camera, which is very nice. This glass is so good. It's like HD life. The NIR double polarized lenses, they make everything super, super clear. I'm out in the desert filming a lot. I'm in the car all day sometimes, driving into the sun on the way home from a shoot back towards the beach. Man, my eyes can be burning, but with the Dylan Optics sunglasses, it just saves me. They've got an aviator, a lot of aviator styles. They've got a lot of wraparound plastic styles. They've got all different colored lenses, blue, gold, green, black, silver. And they've even got prescriptions, which I got for, I don't wear prescriptions, but I got them for my wife. She does, and she really likes hers. Um, All you got to do is go to thesmokingtire.com and click on the Dylan banner under the Partners tab on our website. If you use that link, it's just right there on our website, right at the top under the Partners tab. We will send you a free Smoking Tire t-shirt with your purchase for every pair that you get. Um, 
I love these things. I'm going to keep wearing them, and 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 I I would wear them even if they didn't pay me. But fortunately, they also do. <laughs> Alrighty, on this episode, we've got someone who I've wanted to get on the show for a very long time. Uh, I have never met him as a person before, although I am very familiar with his acting work, playing the iconic role of Han in the Fast and Furious franchise. But I do know from friends we have in common and social media that he is one of the chillest uh, car guys in Southern California. He loves his Nissan 240Zs, and he is uh, trying to learn everything he can about the history of these cars, wrenching on them, driving them, and uh, and and using cars to connect with others around the world. And he, I, after our talk, he, uh, I, I really appreciated how he embraced the character of Han and how he uh, sometimes he's got to just accept that they made him Mickey Mouse and he needs to be Mickey Mouse to the car people. So he might as well learn what he's talking about. Uh, Sung Kang, the actor, enthusiast, and and uh, someone I'm proud to now call a friend on the Smoke and Tire podcast. Welcome, Crap, sir. We're not crapping on fast food. No, no. Some is definitely better than others. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What's happening? This Thank is you. it. You're yes. here. Yes. Thank it's you. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Matt. This is fucking good. Thank I'm you. I'm glad to have uh, a legitimate family member, a member a member of the family in the business, in the in, in building, because I, you know... I like your the character you play in a series of films that I've enjoyed throughout years, and then I started following you on Instagram because of that and because of Larry Chen, and then I found out that you're actually more interesting in real life than your character, and how great is that? Really? More, I think so. More interesting? Yeah, I think you have a very authentic taste in cars. Huh. I think you have a, a very genuine personality, at least what I just know of you from social media. It's, it's not, it's, and everyone I know who's met you was like, oh yeah, Song, he's the fucking man. It's no. nice. Well, thank you. It's, so it, welcome. It's all a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you authentic. You rolled up in a 240Z. Yes, yes. And it's like a Z with a story. What's the story on that on that green Z outside? Is it green? It's greenish. It's, it, it's pea green. It, it's, uh, they call that, I think that is a, uh, Avocado. It's sad. Uh, yeah, avocado sure. Ish, right? <laughs> ish, I'll buy right? avocado. Yeah. It lived in Valencia for forty years. A couple owned it, and a gentleman in Utah acquired it off of eBay. And it came with a love letter, and it talked about you know its problem with its choke and why the the RPM gauge didn't work. And you know they said this is a classic car and you should insure it for a certain way. And you can tell. When you, <laughs> right? you can tell. Uh, we recommend you insure it with Haggerty. Yes, exactly. You've been very nice yes. to us. Yeah. Collector <laughs> car insurance company, right? Um, oh my God. Are you now gonna start writing letters about all your cars when you sell them about directions for their care? Well, I think because of social media, I don't have to do that. <laughs> Everybody like, just they, they, they see the story, you know? People come up to you, oh, you still having that steering problem, bro? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're able to engage and follow the whole journey of, you know, you finding the car. And it's kind of up to us on how we, I guess, share the narrative. Do you like the involvement of all those opinions in things that you're doing with cars? Oh, yeah. You do? Oh, yeah. Okay. Because... It, you know, my approach to the car stuff is that because I've had the right like mentors or bigger brothers, if you will. Who are they? Like Kenji Simono from Gretti, uh -huh. who built the the Fuguzi, who you know. That's a fucking cool car. I want to talk about that in a little bit. Okay. Continue, yeah. Um, I have people like uh, Mike Spagnola from SEMA, who did the underdog, the uh, Ford Maverick build with me. Oh yeah, Maverick. Yeah. I mean, that was yeah. cool too. Yeah. Maverick is like the little muscle car. Like the miniature muscle car. Yeah, almost. it's the underdog car, man. Like yeah. it was housewives, right? It was, right. Like, it was like it was the it was the bastard of the you know the Ford family. Like, well, whoever drove a Maverick, but nobody cool until you. Yes. <laughs> and, and Wait, are were there cool? Is there a cool Maverick driver in pop culture? In period, anybody cool drive a Maverick? Wait, wasn't that Mad Max first car? No, is that well, he yeah. had the no, that's a different car. No, the Mad Max car is uh, the Australian market. Oh boy. I'm gonna take a fucking beating for not knowing this one. Is it a Mustang? No, no. it's the Falcon XB. The Pursuit mm -hmm. Special. Is that right? Is it a Falcon XB? I'm gonna take a beating for not knowing that. Yeah, GT Falcon. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Of course oh, he does. Thank knows. God. Look at that. Woo! <laughs> genius. There you go. Stupid yeah. weed. Second yeah. guessing myself <laughs> again. <laughs> um, okay, so so your your mentors are like industry people. No, yeah. it's not like. 
oh, the dude next door to me that had a skyline when I was a kid or something like no, that? No, I grew up in Georgia. I, did, I, I had an older gentleman that taught me what restoration was. He had a 63, 63 uh, Impala. Oh, cool. And it was a convertible, had you know, red interior. And he, he, you know, as a kid, I'd walk around the neighborhood, and he was a Korean war vet. And uh, he, you're Korean. Korean. Is that weird? Yeah, weird, right? <laughs> very, that very, very strange. Weird. I yeah. see. I really feel a Clint Eastwood movie happening. Yes, <laughs> Gran, Turi- Gran Turismo, <laughs> basically, <pretty> right? <laughs> and he would let me sit there in the garage with him and basically ask him questions like, "Why does that say SS? Uh, like, what is that? And why are you doing that?" And he gave me this kind of understanding of this romantic, I guess notion of restoring a car yeah and why badging is important what a different why guys flip over ss over just the you know just the stock standard mm-hmm. right and and as a kid it, and that, that, it didn't make any sense and the car's not cool i'm into knight rider you know like dukes of hazard like i'm like this, what is this old man car right right but, right, right but it stuck with but me you did you didn't realize you could apply that ethos right away to those other cars too yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, then you know life happens and you know you I think if the community or you don't have, you know, that element in your life where you can ranch or you can learn from a mentor. I mean, we didn't have that. My parents were busy, man. They're working class, and and so you know, it, it's very. It was a romantic notion to be in the garage and work on a vintage car. That when you were money. in Georgia, what were you? What did you drive as a kid? Nothing. You, nothing. I had no car. What was your first car? Um, it was a Toyota Tercel. Oh man. Yeah. I wish I could say those were good. The, Wait, what 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 year are we talking? I'd say like a 89. Oh, that might have been Zach. What year was the Tercel that we man, were not able to kill in our movie? 87? Oh, yeah, 87. Yeah, I think we had an 87 yep. Tercel, the coupe, and it was like coupe. a wedgie coupe. Yeah, with the uh, you know, <clears throat> like a hatchback kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. We made a movie called All Cars Go to Heaven in like 2013, and we drove one of those fucking things that we bought for 300 bucks across the entire state of Washington off road. Was it red? No, no it was blue. silver blue. Silver blue. It was like this exact. Oh, you part. had the hatchback? Yeah, we had the, 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 co- the, the two door one there at the top left, that thing. Yeah. The that- hatchback is better. Well, you know, th- yeah, yeah. No, that looks nicer. That looks way nicer. You think that lo- oh, yeah, yeah. That's that's sporty. My, I my mean, thing. it's like a bad '86. It's like a really bad '86. Yeah. But we couldn't kill it. We actually couldn't kill the car. We we really tried. I I couldn't kill mine either. <laughs> did no, you try? I did. Yeah, I did. You know, someone stole one of my tires, right? Just one. Yeah, just one. Uh-huh. Like the rear passenger, and then I put the spare, and I drove around with the spare for a year. <laughs> <laughs> So that car was so small that the spare was probably like the same size as the right <laughs> time. Not really. I mean, I was leaning a little bit, but I, I kept it at like fifty, yeah. right? And then I drove it to San Francisco to work as a furniture mover, oh, right, man. during the summer, uh-huh. during my college break, and I left it outside my friend's apartment, and they got towed because of the street cleaning. Uh-huh. And then I went to the the you know towing yard. And I go, how much is, does it cost? He's like five hundred bucks. And I said, just keep it. <laughs> keep it. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm gonna tell like, my no. dad I got They're stolen. They're like three hundred. Yeah, like, no, 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 forget it, dude. It's like <laughs> he's like I have I don't I only have liability. And it's like good. Like get the hell. So yeah. then from then on, I took the bus. Oh man. Yeah. So well, yeah. I mean, that's a good way to get rid of a car. It's like <laughs> it's really it would really be nice to be able to say just keep it, bro. In hindsight, not if you're economically there, but. <laughs> Like, I almost want to do that intentionally now. Yeah. Like, just it to have feel that great. feeling. It would feel great, <laughs> right? Unless you, it was for economic reasons. I just realized that I bought a Miata for 3500 bucks <clears> and <throat> once got it towed and it cost 1000 to get it out. Like, that is not <laughs> fiscally responsible. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Getting, yeah, it's expensive to be broke. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so, did, was it the films that got you back into it after that? It gave me access. Oh, shit. You know, and it gave me, it, it was like a fast pass that, Magic Mountain. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I, I realized- Hollywood that, stunt drivers, a bunch of tuner cars. Yeah. Fucking, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. You know, everybody wants to, like, invite you to the garage, and then they realize that you're not on. They're like, you know nothing. <laughs> I swear, dude. They're like, some old some old timer came up to me after we built the figures. He goes, hey, man, how many liters is this? And I'm like, I don't know. He goes, dude, it's RB26, you moron. <laughs> right? It's like 2.6. And I was like, dude, I- I don't know. I don't know <laughs> these things. It's and, okay. You don't have to. Yeah. So Not it, required. It, it allowed me to have a fast pass, but then it, it, then I think I got lucky. I you think. swam with sharks though right away. But I, I had some great brothers, man. Like Kenji, 
Like mm-hmm. he took me under his wing, and you know, all of Gretty and that community that built that car. I mean, that that car is not. I don't own that car. Like that car was built by a community of people at that time that needed. I think an ambassador. They needed a car that spoke for this dying kind of enthusiasm for the JDM. You yeah. Know? Well, both you and Larry Chen have Zs, mm-hmm. and Chris Forsberg has a really cool yeah. Z. She so, knows, yeah. I mean, there's quite a few like really cool people in the Southern California car community that are rocking Zs right now. So, oh, yeah. I would say culturally they are alive and well. And you've got Larry was here last week. Super excited. Did you see his pictures of the 400Z? Oh, yeah. He got to do all over L.A.? He was, like, super excited about that. Yeah. I got to go see that car. Did you like it? Yeah. Ah. In person? In the picture, you know, you you have no visceral reaction to it because you're like, yeah, that's a nice yellow and looks like an egg. That's great. You know, it's like, cool. (laughs) Whatever. (laughs) (laughs) A lot of cool renders are like, great, that's great. But it's like, so what? Right? And then somehow I got the opportunity to go see that car and you sit in it and it it it's everything that was right about the S30 mm-hmm. and I think what Mr. Katayama wanted and if he were alive I think he would say yeah man this is a great representation and I like you sit in it and you feel you just you, there's like goosebumps it's like it's there's a great reaction there's all these little easter eggs in the car that's fun right yeah and then you look at it and you go what a blank canvas like so many renders have come out and you're like, yo man, they've left it for us to like be, to o- take ownership. Well, they gave the, they put the basics there. It's got a turbo motor, so it's gonna be easily, you know, modifiable. It's manual. got a manual gearbox. Yeah. Like, so the, the bones are there. So yeah. it's nice that they'll like, the bummer about the, the 370 and the 350 before it were that a, a naturally aspirated motor is, is a nice thing, but it's expensive to get that anywhere to the next level. So, yeah. um, Working from a more tunable base, like the turbo motors, I'm sure will be in their best interest. And given what they learned on the GTR for a decade, you know, with the turbo V6, I think they'll probably be okay. Yeah, it didn't they say it's the same <clears throat> motor in the Infinity? It probably is right. the Red Sport motor, mm-hmm. right. I think. Yeah, yeah, it's probably basically like a reskinned. They probably are going backwards, Infinity down. Yeah, right? which will be fine. Yeah. I'm stoked to drive it. I bet it'll be cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're the, over the three fifty and seventy were really fun to drive. There was never like when they came out. Yes, yeah, I mean they, they, <laughs> they made them for a long ass time. They did. That's true. But yeah. they were always, but they're still fun. I mean, even though you know the S thirteen came out forty years ago, thirty years ago, it's still fun to drive when you drive it. Easy to drive. Like the, yeah. when when we did Tokyo Drift, they put us in a lot of the cars to teach us how to drift. Yeah, which was really we didn't learn anything. We <laughs> <just> learned, <laughs> learned how to go in circles and stuff and st- install the cars, but the, 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 the they didn't put you next to like the ocean. And, like you guys didn't learn to drift <laughs> no. on this dock. No, they took us in Irwindale and right. locked us up, right? And then, uh, um, but the 350 was the easiest. I think it was like I think it was a 350 in the movie, 350 or 370. Um, I think that might have been a 370. Didn't the one. DK's car, the black Oh, no, one. it was a 350. Yeah. yeah. The easiest one. And, and that was easy. Tanner's stunt driving that car, I believe. Tanner and Samuel Hubernet. Yeah, Hubernet. Yeah. Hub- Samuel was, he did a lot of my uh, stunt driving, so you would see pictures of him in a way. <laughs> you guys look is, like Pre-CG. He is, is pre-CG. the whitest. Yeah. <laughs> The whitest <laughs> white person. So, he looks like a Dutch boy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's, a, I mean, he's literally Swedish. Yeah. Like, he's the whitest person you can yeah. put on camera. But they're yeah. so talented. I oh mean, my God. They, people think, and you, everybody needs to hear this, is that I am not a stunt driver. I do not do my stunts. These guys, these guys are masters. Like, I remember Tanner and Samuel, they were like, hey, I was like, how are you going to do this? How are you going to, how are you going to drift up this? You know this ramp. Oh, light, that was awesome. right. Yeah, and I go. I, I thought this is like special effects, and he's like, <laughs> no, no. Let me show you. Like, put a quarter on the ground, and they went and they drifted. And they hit. They go. We'll hit it with our like rear tire. Right? Yeah, and they hit it. And yeah, like, you know, for, for any actor to say that we do that is taking credit for years. Oh yeah, of like passion. I've worked with Tanner. Right? He's completely fucking ridiculous. In yeah. fact, it might be time to gratuitously pr- promote my new show with Tanner that came out today. Let's it's do called it. Sorted. Sorted. It's a yeah, it's a tuner car shootout. Typical tuner car shootout show. It is uh on the Super Speeders YouTube channel. I didn't I lost that argument to get it. I didn't actually get into an argument, but it's uh it's up there on Rob's Super Speeders YouTube channel and it's we got 8,000 horsepower. It's my friend's YouTube channel. Okay. Uh we have 8 cars 
eight thousand horsepower, and uh, episode one is up today. But Tanner is our stick, our track driver. Oh, so wait, we, he's in the helmet. No, no, he's oh, being. He, he gave it away. You no, he's. <laughs> I was like, he's dude, being what? him. Oh, he's okay. being himself, but he's uh, he's our tame racing driver, as it were. Um, but we put him on camera, and he, and he gets to curse. He says he actually says fuck on camera, which might be the first time ever that he does that. But um, the cars are super sketchy and crazy. And you know when we were doing it, it's super low budget. So I drove the camera car, mm -hmm. and Tanner was stunt driving, and he hit the exact same marks every time. But he did it in a different car, a different home-built tuner Jeez. car wow. every time the first time. Like, he had no fuck-ups. Like, he got in a car, and between the exit of the fucking pit and turn two, he had figured out how to do an entry speed slide that that broke right as the van exited, like what? The, what kind of a fucking weird robot are you? Well, he must just have this encyclopedia, like in his hands and ass, really, yeah. where he just goes, "Oh, this feels like that thing I drove ten years ago, and the thing I drove three years ago, mm -hmm. and I know I can initiate like this, and it's just that's where it is, man. It's all that experience. So nuts, yeah. so, so talented. nuts, yeah, so talented. Yeah. Did they, but did they let you have some fun and do some driving when making films or while we're shooting? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we get to go. Park the car from the mark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? that's a bummer. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it makes sense. Look, you get in trouble, someone gets hurt. Like, yeah, yeah it's just it doesn't make any sense. Like yeah. these guys, Tanner and these guys, they you know they devote their life to this. Let them do it. They get the credit. They make they make the movies what they are, and you know they. It's so I'm 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 cool with not having to do that. Yeah, you know, right. I don't I don't need speed in my life and. Yeah, That's I'm, why you rolled 100 horsepower, 240. Exactly. Like your boss. Hey, man, I got to get home. You know? <laughs> I got a wife. Yeah, I got yeah. people. Yeah. That's awesome, though. Yeah. I mean, I, they, they, I'm glad you give those guys the props because they fucking have a real talent that's like, that's right. and they, it's not just talent. It's like practiced. That's they right. earn it. That's right. You know? That's right. So that, is it Fuguzi? Fuguzi. Okay. Fuguzi. I was wondering how if it was just Fuguz. Is that nah, kind of Fuguzi? Kind of, kind of also works. Fuguzi's better though. Well, in in the Asian tongue, it would be Fuguzi. Yes. Fuku. If, I, if I do that shit, hmm, I no, get canceled. Can, but no, I, I can. I can. <laughs> yeah. Fuguzi. <laughs> There you go. Really, really <laughs> lean into it. <laughs> oh, Fuguzi. <laughs> That's a good-looking car, man. It, man, it's. It's cool. Wide like, body. This is a, what a great platform for like Larry the rest Chen of photos mine, I guess. right there. And of course, we're buddy. going with the Larry Chen photo. Yeah. Larry, can I, <laughs> can I? Larry gives me. Larry's a, is a great, the best and worst giver, gift giver of all time. Because mm. Larry came in last week and he came and he had a rolled up poster tube, and he goes, "I brought you something." And he didn't use that almost racist Asian accent. I just had a half did. But he he fucking <laughs> rolls out. On this table, a six foot by two foot beautiful photo of my car. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Mm -hmm. And I go, oh man, I gotta get this thing fucking framed now. And I brought it to the framers to get it framed. It's like sixteen hundred dollars to frame this thing because it's enormous. It's the size of this table. But what are you gonna do? Not frame it? Yeah. It's a custom. It's a custom size. Like so, it's a Larry Chen photo. It's a and it's a That's signed like, Larry Chen original. So yeah. of course you're gonna do it. But it's like, oh man, he, I like I want more gifts, but they also cost me a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> like yikes. Yeah. I got you a present. It's a Maybach that needs maintenance, <laughs> but it's yours if you want it. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so what made you decide to uh, to to go with a natural? Naturally aspirated Skyline motor in this in this in this car. Uh, it wasn't my decision. It, oh. was, it, it was not. It was not. It was it, Kenji. So, the origin of this car was actually it was inspired from a Magnus Walker video. You know his his his, his YouTube videos about the two two seven. Uh huh. And it's so romantic, man. You like I was watching that, going, dude, this guy is like living. Yeah, like, well, yeah. The right? dreadlocks and the accent yeah. and the boots are really cool cars. Yeah, you're like that is cool, man. <laughs> that is like modern day James Dean shit right there, right? Yeah. And I'm like, I would love to do something like that. And yeah. I had a buddy. I have a buddy that has a Porsche repair shop in Pasadena. So I call him. I was like, Hey, man, be great for us to do like a weekend, you know, like project. Something like Magnus, I'd love to do like a 911. I don't know anything about these cars. And he was like, you know, too expensive, right? It's like, what's the budget? And we're, we're like, yeah, weekend project, let's do it for like 20 grand or something. And, and then we, and then, so three of us got together, Mike, Greg, and I, we were looking for like a cheap 
Porsche 912 or 911. And so we went on this journey and then we realized, man, I was talking to my wife and my wife like controls the house. She is, the reason I have a house is because of her. Like, <laughs> actors don't make money until they make money, right? So I'm not gonna lie to you, like she was like, here's your budget, you can spend like, you know, 15 grand for this hobby. And I was like, that's not a Porsche 911, no. dude. You know, that's that's not that's not even the entry price. So, yeah. so my buddy, you know, came over for lunch and he was like, "Yo, man, I just saw a 240. You know anything about these cars?" And I was like, "Nah, I'm from Georgia, man. I don't know. It's like Duke's a hazard car. <laughs> maybe like, we get an, a 63 Impala, maybe." <laughs> yeah, but not. I was like, "What? What's up with that?" I go, "I know what it looks like." And he goes, "I think it's a cheap car." that is cool enough for us to maybe kind of just experiment and build this track car. Mm -hmm. I've seen them online for a couple of grand. He goes, let's look for them. And I was like, I don't care about the car, man. Like, I don't, I'm not, I, I don't understand that car. I went home and looked up the car and then Mr. Katayuma or Katayama, that's the pronunciation, I think. You know, I, I read his story and the ethos spoke to me, man. He's like a you know, out of the box thinker. He did not fit in in Japan. They sent him over here. He wanted to make Datsuns. You want to make sports cars into mm -hmm. these, you know, these these like work cars. They were like boxy, you know, functional. Yeah, the five tens right? and whatever, yeah. right? Yeah, and the trucks, the three twenties, mm -hmm. and then, um, and I was like, yo, that's that's pretty amazing. That's very like you know immigrant story. Yeah, I was like Mr. K. I go, I like his kind of thinking, especially during that time. And then think about it, trying to bring that car into America in the seventies. Yeah, right post World War Two. Well, the, one of the muscle cars, right? Yeah. If, if it's like, po what year did they announce the, the Z? Was 69. The 69. Yeah, yeah, so it's not like it was in 75 or something where everything was slow. It's like 69, our shit was still loud and mm -hmm. huge displacement. And mm -hmm. I think, you didn't know? he make a push because he knew that the brand needed a sports car of some kind to like establish themselves in America? Like, you know, and they still do it today. Like, if you're going to sell commuter cars, you need something cool. Yeah. But they were like, what can what can we build? We're not going to build muscle cars. But yeah. they love like the British sports car idea and yeah. that's kind of what they brought and people loved it yeah i mean it's 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 a baller man mm -hmm. to go and to be able to have the japanese car like that accepted yeah. in america at that time yeah i mean even my mom man because of the korean japanese politics you know she was for years she would never ride in a jap she would never buy a japanese car she's mm -hmm. like we're gonna buy a cataract <laughs> <laughs> that's you know the american dream the cataract yeah right? you know and uh, <laughs> it, it's not gonna be some toyota yeah, right? we didn't buy Sony's. Yeah. We we bought G. My grandma you know? didn't ride in German cars. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so it's you know I was like, yo, this dude is a baller. Yeah. And and then I was like, okay, I can I can I can dig this. So then it's it's so easy to buy a car in L. A. Like you just go to Craigslist, dude. It's like you go, you get the magnet, you walk around, you watch you, you watch you, you watch a YouTube video, right? And people teach you. And then we found this Z. Um, and I think it was like in Valencia. We went to go see a Z, had all this Bondo, and then we went to see a Z. I was looking on Craigslist when we stopped by 7-Eleven to get some water. Uh -huh. And uh, this Christian couple said, hey, yeah, it's Sunday, we're coming back from church. Uh, you know, we inherited the car from a member of the church, and you know, it was in his garage, but we would like it to go to somebody that's gonna take care of it. And but come on by, so we went and it had a roll cage in there. It was like copper brown, it was like poop brown, right? Uh -huh. But you could tell the dude, somebody loved it, right? And then the couple, you know, was like, just so sweet. You know, and they wanted to show, you know, their like Asian kind of like cultural like understanding. So he took me to his backyard and showed me his Asian pear tree and said, nice. I have an Asian <laughs> picture. And I'm standing there going, good. three Asian dudes are going, oh cool, that's awesome, thank you so much. And then, yeah. we look, were, I, yeah. it's like, <laughs> I have a Korean friend. Yeah. And you're, you're like, look, I'm not that even, I'm not even that into 240, man. Yeah. I just read about these. He goes, trust like, me, there's oh no rust, God, because I'm one of you. I <laughs> have an Asian pear tree. <laughs> How are the pears though, really? They well, no, they, were, they, were, they weren't grown. <laughs> they were like in Valencia, God man. God damn it. <laughs> yeah. um, but we got, the, we got the car, and then he, him being a Christian man, he said, hey, I just wanted to tell you that, you know, I prayed that, you know, somebody famous would come and get the car to resurrect it on behalf of my friend. <laughs> and I'm like, what is this? And then, <laughs> and then like, I was really hoping for Jay Leno, but you'll yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and check this out. If you, if when, when we finally finished building the Fugazi, we pulled out the plates. I right? guess they're these blue California yeah. plates. The the actual real plates are three six nine, H N Z Han Z. Oh, cool. Oh, crazy dude. Hell yeah. You know, and these old timers that love their cars tell me, because I go, I'm in a hurry. I want to get this car. I'm I'm looking for this car, and they're like, Hey, relax, son. The car comes to you. You know, like relax. Could you re-register the plate? Was it available? Were you allowed to use the plate? Yeah, yeah. That's oh, they what let we you use, use it? Yeah, oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah. Nice. Those were, you know, we just got new tags. And it, was, it was good. That's awesome. Yeah. Sometimes if you find the old plates and it's like they've been off the road for a few years, it yeah. could be a real headache. No, the yeah, they, they let us use it. That's it's awesome. Fine. The car yeah. came out, I mean, super good. Like, I built this Fox Body Notchback Mustang a few years ago that, like, if you took what you did and put it on a Fox Body Mustang, it would basically be the same thing. Yeah. Uh, wide body, you know, same kind of thing. I, I get every decision that you made, uh, or whoever, if you're, if it wasn't you. This was all, let me, um, I'll give credit where it, it needs to be given. So I, when we were looking, when we finally got that, that Z, um, we're, I was looking at body kit and fender flare options, and I saw a rendering uh, from Mirasan from Rocket Bunny. Yeah. And it, 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 the kits did not exist, and I so I just sent something on Instagram. I was like, "Hey, anybody know where to get this kit?" And somebody from Greddy actually wrote and said, "We're distributors of Greddy. I have this of, of Rocket Bunny. This kit does not exist, but maybe we could talk." Yeah. So I went and met Kenji, um, president of of Kenji of of Greddy, uh-huh. and he had this love affair for the S30. He had a I think a 70 series one and he had to sell it because that's what you know we had kids and you know it was one of those stories and it was like hey man i know this car in and out and he gave me all this japanese literature all these old magazines and he goes you know go study it yeah. you know and then um he goes we can make this kit i can have mirasan make the first kit he goes you know i would love to kind of like come on board and I'm like, what? Awesome. Yeah, because we were going to put the car together with duct tape and, you know, <laughs> I swear, it was going to be a duct tape car, you know? But no, then, this is good. Yeah, he came in and then taught me, like, okay, these are factory, you know, paint codes. This is what Mirasan represents in the in the body kit world. Why we're going for naturally aspirated from the RB26 twin turbo is because it's not done. It's like, it should not be a naturally aspirated car. It's going to sound, you know. It's gonna have its own voice because I would talk to him like this. I go, "What's gonna make this car different from this other RB26?" Well, they right? made it like Revy, right? Doesn't it yeah. rev super high? Yeah. How high does it go? Like nine or something? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I haven't <laughs> driven it in such a long time. I can't really? remember. Yeah. Why don't you drive it? Well, it so I took it out for this video shoot for this watch company, and I at the time had no understanding of how to take care of that car. Uh-huh. I didn't understand with these throttle bodies, you do not drive cars in the dirt. You <laughs> with this car, you don't. Oh yeah, you it's know, got no you air filters, you right? Yeah, it's straight up open yes, trumpets. Oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> and beautiful. But look, I'm I. I tell you, like I did not grow up with those cars. Yeah, no, but so. some production designers, like, can you fucking drift it in yes. the dirt? <laughs> right. Yeah. So we did, and then the car never worked after that. Oh my <laughs> god. And so then, <laughs> never worked after that. And what's an air filter? <laughs> yeah, never worked after that. And then I'll take the blame for it. I had no understanding how to take care of the car. Yeah. Um, then I said, before I ever put this thing back on the road, I better go and like learn what I'm doing uh-huh. and respect what Kenji has built for me because I saw in his eyes and Ben Schwartz and all the people put like their heart into this. They're like, the fuck is wrong with this guy, man? <laughs> And I get it now, dude. Like yeah, totally, yeah, like you know, I hate to laugh, you know, but like so it is kind of funny. So well, disrespectful. no, I mean not know? necessarily. I mean, I think you probably thought you were getting cool media for the car, and you no. just no, no, dude. It was just ignorance. It was just stupidity. Okay. Yeah, you, right. you don't, you don't do that. You know, you don't, you don't. You just, you because it's just. I should have asked. I should have done my homework. Um, All right, and, and that's then, the sign of maturity that you're like, no, no. I fucked that up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I totally fucked up the car. So I was trying to throw you a bone. I guess no, I guess no, no. It was, bone, it's all me, man. Bone rejected. It's all me. But it's good because it gave time for the car to kind of rest. You know? <laughs> did you act? Did you like blow the motor? Yeah. Everything. Oh, you did. Yeah. Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah, it's it, it needs a. Oh, that's a bar. Yeah. You took it to Pismo and you're like, it's running weird. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> took it through the dunes a couple uh, times. A, yeah, pretty much. Dude, that that photo downstairs of my Safari 911 at El Mirage, like. 
we still find that was two years ago like it was one day two years ago and we still find dust and when i the car ran like garbage after that and i brought it home and like i had like a pound of sand in the air filter i mean i can't even imagine what would have happened if i was trying to do any of that with no air filter i know kenji came over finally came over about three weeks ago and i I saw that you know I, my friend was one of my friends had the car in you know his mom's garage. So I said let's let's put it away for about ten years and you know I gotta go this uh, ten this, years. Yeah, I said let's just put it away because I feel like I really abused the car, you know, and and then so Kenji came over and goes let's take a look at it. And when I when I picked up the car from my friend, oh my god, dude, it was like a like a. A daughter or like yeah. your, your dog like your dog that depends on you right that loves you yeah first time a car ever spoke to me it was like man why what what did i do yeah why did I just <laughs> what did i just so wrong for you to treat me this way it was all in parts right yeah. like the interior was all fucked up everything's in you know boxes and bags and i was like like looking at it, I go, there's so much love in this car and i am this irresponsible dude that just basically dismantled this thing i was like what did what did i do and it was this moment where I was like, I will never, ever treat a car this way again. Okay. If I ever have a car in my life, that thing is going to be in, you know, touched by me. It's going to be loved by me. Otherwise, I don't need to do it because it's so disrespectful. I was looking at it, and I was like, how dare you, man? <laughs> These are men's <laughs> like, sold. life and dreams and like their, their skill set put into this car. And some fucking actor from Fast. Uh, you know, tries oh, don't to, beat yourself not, up uh, that badly. Look, Come but this, on, these man. are facts, bro. These no. are. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. This is not. This is not. I'm not downplaying anything. This is a fact because that car represents something positive for a lot of people. All right. I, I did not mm-hmm. take care of it. Okay. But where we are today is, is it that, alive now? Okay. Right, well, Kenji. Kenji came over. Uh huh. And I said, hey. You know, I would love to resurrect this car because in this time, I think this car could put smiles on people's faces. Yeah, there you go. Right? Let's let people drive it. Let's people let people enjoy it. Came over, you know, and it, it needs a new block, right? So he called somebody, and somebody is willing to trade us their block with our block because it's a they have they have parts they just want to display in their shop. Uh-huh. So it works out. We're like, ooh, that I works out. I need a coffee table. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and. Kenji suggested it went. It was NA. Why don't we go with take the it back to Turbo? Yeah, it's not a terrible plan. Right? I like that plan. Revs are fun, but the RB26 is. It's about. It's about turbos. Yeah. I assume you've had at least a couple of goes in Skylines before, right? No. You never driven a Skyline? Mm, Get the fuck. Like out around here. the block, but not, you never really had a nice no. drive in a Skyline. No. They are really something. That engine is really, really, really something. They're very good. There's yeah. a reason people pay a lot of money for 30-year-old Nissans. Yeah. They're worth it. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, I, I can't handle all that horsepower, man. No, no, you know, it's not about that. You don't need to have enormous horsepower. I, you know what the ones Skylines I like are? The stock ones. Oh, really? Like 350 horsepower, they're fabulous. Yeah. Well, this when, is, when you had this, I mean, it was probably 2,300 pounds. I think it said it made 220 horsepower to the wheels. It revved in nine grand. Oh, yeah. which is a very special. That's, that's probably a special that's probably experience. really fun. Yeah, I bet that's, that's a really nice. cool thing, and it kind of it's, like a it's got a bit of the flavor of it that it originally had. You know, it's an NA naturally it's an aspirated six, but you doubled the power, or at least actually maybe a little bit more than that. Definitely a different vibe. But then if you you know you get used to it, and you're like, oh, let's put a turbo on here and see how this do you, feels. Do you <laughs> yeah. wish it had some insulation? Uh, <laughs> Nah. It looks. For <laughs> people that are just listening, go to Speed Hunters and look up these photos because it's like bare white interior other than the seats, yeah. bare metal, but it's got like, you have like the rally footboards that yeah. are just drilled metal, which are yeah, awesome. Yeah, those are cool. And, and that was made like in Grady. Holes. What? That Everything. was made at Grady last moment uh, by just one of the, the, the crew. He just, he had some leftover aluminum and I had a picture. I was like, hey man, these Porsches have these like floors like this. He goes, I can make. Yeah. And then he made that. <laughs> They're awesome. Like, yeah. No, it's a great look, great stance. It's everything about that's cool. Does that it drive it, like it looks? Oh yeah, yeah. It, it, it drives well. Fine, the brakes okay. needed. We we do need to work on the brakes a little. Are they, bit. Tell me, they're power assisted or not? Uh, are they, are they power they're assisted? Willwood. But are they have power assisted? Do you know? I don't know. Or do they really heavy? They're heavy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. want power brakes? Yeah. Once a car started, there's people who really like manual brakes, and they start talking about oh, it's purity of feel or some shit. Once a car has like 
over 250 horsepower. You you want fucking real brakes. Power yeah. brakes are good. Yeah. Yeah. Rob, what a great look, though. Rob, I got to drive Rob's car, Butters, over at Rob at Z Car Garage, where uh-huh. Larry Z is. Yeah. And he, he has a stop tech, like black label that yeah. he created. Oh, awesome. Car. Oh, man. I drove, a, I did a video where I drove a Z that had a, a 1JZ in it with a turbo, and the fucking car was like rusty. It was fucked. Some like high school kids built it. It was ugly, but it went ungodly fast mm. and i think i think as i was as i was telling there was a like broken glass was like rattling in the dashboard it was fucked oh i meant to ask you because zach just pulled up your instagram some yeah. kangsta yeah. on instagram that alpha montreal gets around that's such a weird car haggerty drive share lets you have a go yeah isn't that little thing fun oh that's amazing i drove that car last year it's rad you feel you feel uh Kind of James Bondy, let a <laughs> totally. Sean Connery, mm-hmm. yeah. put on a you know, turtleneck. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, yeah, that was his casual evening wear. Yeah, that was an elegant car. You feel, you know, like I go in Korean and I sit down. And I'm like, hello, sir. I'm at Italian. It's so so nice. Yeah, you know? it's, it's like a, a little Miura, a little Lamborghini yeah. Miura, and that engine. It's a 2.8 or 2.6 liter V8 yeah. that loves to rev. And you actually kind of have to treat it very badly. Yeah. You treat it kind of like you hate it and whine the shit out of it all the time. Yeah. And it's I like watched your video and sounding... Jay's video to, yeah. learn, to know how to drive it. You drive it hard. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. The yeah. old Italian stuff really needs to be driven hard. The term Italian tune-up is very is a very real thing. We do it in our cars. Like my black Ferrari downstairs that yeah. I just got, yeah. it, it had a major service last year, but then the guy drove it a couple hundred miles and kind of parked it. And in order to, it, it kind of runs a little funny when it's cold. And so all I do is pour injector cleaner in it. And then once it gets warm, I do like third and fourth gear pulls to red line. And it blows all this shit out, burns all the carbon off, and then it runs good. It's not, it's just, it's that easy. And you have to do that like all the time. It's like an old it's, man that needs to just like yeah. blow his nose. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's like you know Jack Jack Lalane. Remember that dude is like yeah. fucking a ninety uh, working out. Yeah. That it's you got to have that yeah. right. You need uh, the drink my juice and so you'll get a nice like you know <laughs> flow in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Everybody put on your one piece suit <laughs> and let's do some jumping jacks. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone got their onesie mm. ready? Yeah. He was like, what if I could work out in slacks? And his tailor was like, what? <laughs> Didn't he like, he would do some like crazy feats. In his, in he was his like a gymnast swim, type person. Swim across yeah, yeah, the yeah. English Channel at 85 or some shit. That was that era that you could be a fitness guru and that looked like you're in shape. Yeah. Remember, what, what was Richard, Richard Simmons? Simmons? yeah. Come on. Just, he wouldn't work today. Just like, real hey guys, jumping jacks. <laughs> The CrossFit guys right. are like, fuck you, man. That's right. right. <laughs> all the veins all the time. Yeah. Oh, fitness influencers. <laughs> kill me. <laughs> I hate CrossFit people. I understand what you're doing. I just hate you all. It's like it's CrossFit people and vegan people. It's like the same thing. Just... I took CrossFit for about six months. And to really... prepare for something no, or just no, for? I, I Just because I, I was fat. I was like fat, felt like a bum. And <laughs> my wife was like looking at me with disdain in the morning. Going, I should go get in shape, like you know, like take care of my body. So that I, it was, I joined CrossFit and realized that there is, Darwinian is true. Darwin had a fact. <laughs> People are born with genes. They're yeah. like that motherfucker's jumping like a hundred times. I can't do that, man. I'm in shape. I'm screw that. Dude. That woman a... is like, like this. I'm all. <laughs> <laughs> There's a dude who runs on the sand this? outside my house. Yeah. Yeah. I've never seen a human be able to accelerate on sand like this. Like yeah. in the soft sand, mm-hmm. like yeah. this dude is fucking Usain bolting the shit. And he has a dog that he races and he fucking beats his dog. Wow. You ever seen a human that could beat their own dog in no. a fucking foot race heads up? I never seen any shit like that before. This dude smokes his dog. Well, his genes are here because his <laughs> his uh, ancestors escaped saber to tigers and shit. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. Uh, yeah. You feel yeah. genetically inferior. You realize if, if if we're in the era of gladiators and someone threw me in the pit, man, I'd be dead, dude. I'd yeah, really oh, me too. I have, I have bad soft. eyes. I'd be like, where are you? Where, where's that sword coming yeah, from? Like, hold on, <laughs> let me tell you a joke real quick. And if you like it, don't kill me. I would definitely be like, I'd be like the coneheads. I'd be like. Sometimes I feel <laughs> I've got to, eh, eh. and then I'd hit a golf ball into your face. You gotta invent something real quick. 
Um, mm-hmm. Wait, oh, I wanted to ask you a dumb Fast and Furious question, but now I don't even fucking remember it. That's okay. Uh, it's okay. That's okay. It'll yeah. come back to me eventually. Good. I like that they actually. I I, I like that they uh, that they use basically your story arc to to unite the orphan film. What like a, the number the third film the Tokyo oh, right, Drift right, film right, is like right. exists like in the basically separate universe except for you yeah which is cool and Vin well Vin connects at yeah the that's true mm-hmm. for like but for five seconds yeah. yeah yeah you get the full connection yeah I was gonna ask you about getting fat because they made you eat <laughs> chips in every fucking scene nah just fat yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's lazy that's, yeah you have your lazy periods right when you made the first film would you have guessed that at some point you would be promoting number fucking nine? No. Because I died. I, <laughs> <laughs> I knew the ending when I got the script. I was like, well, it's going to be a good ride. Good I better time. enjoy it. <laughs> that was a, that was, we couldn't, you know, because we shot at Universal a lot, so I, we could sneak into, you know, Jurassic Park writing. And I was like, everyone's like, dude, you've been there every day. I go, dude, this is going to be, I don't know why I'm going to be coming back. <laughs> Yo, this is a straight to video going. movie, man. I, <laughs> get that craft service, stick it in your back, bro. <laughs> yeah. I was just, uh, we were at Cars and Coffee in, uh, in Malibu, which, if you, I know it's a little farther for you, but if you ever want to join us Sunday mornings, it's fun as hell. It's a really cra- crazy variety of cars. I loved but that. Yeah. There was uh, some Hollywood folks just. Just talking about people who who raided the craft services on set like there was no tomorrow, and I'm not gonna name drop, but there there was big names that would like go to the Letterman sets and shit. It's like, <laughs> oh yeah, well, you can't have any shame of that. Like, no, no, that's, that's the like, general consensus was the stand up comedians would take any opportunity to get food, even if they were already very very famous. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm all about that, man. I go into the the airport lounges now right like it's great because because of covid they they wrap all the stuff yeah yeah oh yeah they're <laughs> just like you can I take got, it to go i got lunch i got i got some dinner i got some gifts <laughs> 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 i gave it here's some spoons <laughs> i have a customer that's from the philippines who brings me all the craziest which i know is just from the airport in like manila or whatever but like you know egg and fish flavored popcorn and like really weird Filipino snacks that turn out to be delicious. Yeah. I appreciate them. They're probably taken from the fucking whatever the airline is. The Hudson is. News over there. Yeah. Yeah. Over there. Yeah. yeah. My mom taught me that. She taught, you know, she, when I, oh, I have a fascinating story. She's never, she's only come to set once, right? She is kind of still, I think, dealing with the fact that I've chosen acting opposed to Really? Yeah, she's like she's like is, the most Korean mom that a Korean mom could be. No, I know a lot of Korean moms that are supportive of their <laughs> artistic children, but she doesn't believe I have any talent. She That's goes, so fucking. She goes, funny. She, goes, <laughs> she goes. She goes. The first thing I ever showed her was I, I remember I did this show called Martial Law. I was so proud. It was like first time I got a speaking line, and it's like I was two episodes, and I was with the lead, and like you know I'm playing the lead son, and. I send her the VHS and she, she, I call her and I go, what do you think? And she goes, yeah, you just, <laughs> just have no wow. talent. Your, your face, like, you know, I told you you should wear glasses because your eyes, they're like, they're evil. Like they're not, they're, not, they're, not, they're suspect. Like, you know, I would never buy a car from you. I'm like, what? She goes, there are people who are supposed to be actors and famous. Like I go, like who? She goes like Elvis Presley. <laughs> And Charlton, he's like a Moses. great actor. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And Moses, I go. Let's Moses, go watch like Moses. Elvis. And Charlton Heston. <laughs> <Right>. Moses. <laughs> Charlton Heston. Oh my God. She goes, you? No, you need to be. We gotta drag race this <laughs> art seven <laughs> against this guy, <laughs> Toretto. <laughs> like, take your dirty Thank you very paws much, off me. <laughs> wow, that's very good, yeah. Zach. Great, great, great audition, Charles. Uh, <laughs> next, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If your mom ran casting, unbelievable. <laughs> and then Elvis. It would be Elvis. Paul would be Elvis. And oh, then my God. And then Charlton Heston. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> somebody backdate. Somebody fucking backdate that shit. We need some animation. God damn, that'd be great. Uh, Charlton Heston. Man, I'll tell you what, I need an awesome bottle by tonight. <laughs> but they don't do it. Like, why does he have a guitar? Get his guitar. <laughs> Why is he changing into a Hawaiian shirt? Yeah. I don't know. No. Hey man, you got you got it. You got the, you got my brain pills? Yeah. Got my brain pills. 
That's not the wardrobe. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I need my blue suede shoes to heel toe this. <laughs> turn, a, turn a sandwich with quaaludes, please. Jesus. That would be amazing to see. Uh, Spe- like, mo- that's funny. Yeah. My mom was like, why aren't you on TV? I was like, I've been on TV twice. She goes, yeah. <laughs> she goes yeah, but you could have been a doctor. I'm like, Gabe's a doctor and he's not even practicing. She's like, I know, but still. <laughs> he, he can introduce himself as doctor. <laughs> he has the card. That's all that matters. Uh, I park cars. <laughs> Good building. <laughs> Good place to park, <laughs> yeah, cars. park cars. I park cars. Yeah. Uh, my, mom, right. my mom's still asking me, like, you know, she's, she, she called me a few years ago. She said, hey, you know, it's okay to give up this acting thing and I go she goes just I have the number card. one she movie goes, in America mom <laughs> she goes get a job with a business card I'm like what and I'm like what she goes you know uh, I know your cousin has a friend that is a notary public in Atlanta <laughs> and he's killing it he's like he's <laughs> He's killing it in the Korean community. He just leased right? an Avalon. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it says TRD on the back. I don't know what that means, but it looks very nice. Totally respectable. I don't know how your mom just got Jewish, but she did. Uh, That's amazing. Yeah. So, one time to set. Oh, one time to that. So. <laughs> So, so I, I, when I did Tokyo Drift, I was like, this might be my last movie, my only movie, the only opportunity that I get to fly her out. She was in Korea, so I was like, hey, we're in Tokyo for a few weeks. I'm gonna fly you out, come and stay. I'm gonna take you shopping. And so she comes, and you know, the first time she ever flew business class, and you know, first time, you know, we, we don't come from that cloth. And we, it was, you know, so f- to be able to give that to my mom and then go shopping, like actually go, yeah, whatever like, you want. It was like the first time in my life I could do that. Shopping, her, right? shopping. Right, but my mom's a big woman, like not fat, but she's like she's like a tall Korean woman, and all the coats in Japan were like a little oh, too no. small. <laughs> but she wanted a coat, so she was like, "All right, I think this one kind of fits, right?" It's <laughs> like squeezing herself in the coat. So we go back to the Park Hyatt, which is where the movie uh, Lost in Translation was uh-huh. shot. Like it's a beautiful mm-hmm. hotel. It was the first time. We get to stay in a place like this, and then we run into the director in the lobby, and she goes, uh, and then Justin was like, hey, you should ask Sung to uh, buy you another coat. And then she goes, yeah, one day when he's in a real movie. Oh, like, no. You know, like a real movie, <laughs> with, like you know, big movie stars, then maybe. Oh, get the fuck out of here. And so I bring her to set. She's never been on set, so she's never seen the craft service table. It's all free, right? So, um, I'm, I she's she's looking she's you know she she keeps you know she she's looking at you know the the shooter she doesn't understand it she's like I don't know what you're doing she says that's cool and I, I went to change and I said just stand here so she's standing in front of the craft service and 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 um I come out I go she has her wallet out I go what are you doing she goes well I want to buy you some sausages <laughs> these little <laughs> Japanese sausages put them in your pocket but the guy's not here, and I go, oh, this is free. And she goes, all of it? And I go, yeah, all of it. And she starts to stuff her bag. <laughs> like she clears out the sausages, right? Nice. And that night, uh, Peter Jackson and the King Kong uh, uh, cast were there to do their Universal premiere, so they invited us. So I said, hey, Mom, we should go to this. And it was a really like nice theater, and they didn't have any like concessions. Like the, For some reason, it's different from here. Like That place didn't have popcorn and stuff. So. It, we're starving. The whole cast is starving. And, they didn't and it, do concessions in Japan? Well, in that theater, they oh. did not. Oh, it was like a fancy... Yeah, you could do it outside, but you couldn't bring it oh, inside right, right, and right, stuff. Right. So, you know, so it was like a special thing. It's like thing. a theater theater. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. And they're on stage, all the actors, so it's like, oh, one hour, <laughs> two hours. Like, fuck, dude, we're starving. And everyone's starving, and my mom goes, hey, people are hungry? I go, yeah. And she starts to pull out the sausages. Mama's yeah. Yeah. the rescue. Boom! Nice. Right? So On set forever now. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So How's Mama. King Kong? That's hilarious. I don't, King, know, I don't know if I ever saw King Kong. <laughs> King Kong was good. Was it? Oh, that's Peter Jackson, man. That's a good movie. I guess. Peter yeah. Jackson does rule. Yeah. That's nice. Is that a courtesy thing? If you're on, if you're making a movie in the same hotel as someone else, that there's like a cross invite? No, I think we begged to like the invite. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, please. They're going, hey, the Tokyo Drift, who? Uh, like, who, why? What? <laughs> yeah. what the fuck that guy's like, what is drifting? <laughs> yeah. 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 Is, uh, uh is, uh, you know, it seems like when you're, uh, especially the, the, the more recent films where it's more of like a, you know, ensemble type cast, it seems like you guys are all having a good, pretty good time. Yeah. I think, you know, after after Paul passed, everyone grew up, 
Yeah. You know, and the ego is kind of, a lot of the, you know, you just, you know, it's, hard, it's hard, man. It's hard being like famous and shit, right? People think it's easy, but it fucks with your head. And then, you know, I think early on people are young and they don't know what to do with it. And I think that was a reset to go, mm -hmm. yeah, this is kind of all bullshit. Yeah. You know, this is reality and he's, it's not a movie character anymore. People pass away. So going back to it, you know, you have your reservations. You go, what's, what is this? Are we, should we be, even be doing this? Like, what's going on? We don't have our brother here, right? And then I think pe 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 the re you know, because people really did care and you realize the love for Paul was real, you know, and I think that's something that people just can't bullshit anymore, you know, and it's, it, it shows in like how we hang out with each other now. Yeah. Like we are family, you know, we are dysfunctional, but like before, you know, you couldn't just accept <clears throat> now, like we just go, yeah, man, everyone's their way. And it's like, we might not see them next year or the yeah. year after. So just love, dude. It's like nothing to complain about, dude. We're so blessed. We're fucking actors. Yeah. There's nothing. It's the only job in the world where you could show up with no underwear. <laughs> <laughs> they have it True. for you. It's yeah. part of your wardrobe. Right? You're good to go. Like, come on, man. If I was a CP, like, oh, by the way, Matt, I'm doing your taxes, but could I borrow some underwear? <laughs> like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. But, you know, actors like, hey, I got no underwear, wardrobe lady. Wardrobe, like, they, they have you. Yeah, you right? are good. Come on. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty uh, coddling kind of thing. It's just, it, you know, the travel, it's hard to be away from your family, stuff like that. Well, do you think actors know. are normal people, or do you think actors are fucking weird people that are trying to, like, escape themselves? I think the ones that last, I think the ones that can see. Wait, are which? <laughs> Well, I think, yeah, I mean, you met them. Yeah, I think the ones that last and are able to look at you in your eyes when they talk to you, and they may have made that's a mistake. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, right? that's a good, that's a good uh, and people barrier. Make, yeah, people grow, right? I think, right? Forward. Yeah. But if you, if you, I think, I, I, I tell people, it's like, hey, man, don't be hunting for fame because it's a cancer. You might not be able to shake it after you get it. Because if you're, you're hunting for something that is fabricated, it's nothing, even if you go, I want to be rich, I can understand that more than I want to be famous. Like, yeah. What does that mean? Famous for what? Yeah. Right? For me, be, for me being famous, is, I mean, even like, the, you know, F list or whatever I am, is like a path to being rich and not the other way around. I don't understand folks that, like, I don't understand a billionaire that starts a YouTube channel. To me, mm -hmm. that makes absolutely no sense. Like, you can fucking floss, like, everywhere you go, you drive a flashy-ass car. Like, people look at you no matter what because of how you present yourself. You need to, like, film yourself, too, like, and But it's the same thing the in internet. the brain, man. It's the I same, know, like, it's validation. Weird. It's the <clears> same <throat> approval. It's all that stuff. Yeah, yeah but it is, it is weird because we're, like, we want to do this content to be able to make money yeah. to then go do the cool thing. And yeah. they're like, well, I have all that, but they yeah. want this. Yeah. It's weird. Now, when you hang out with, like, the, like the billionaire crowd that didn't work for their money yeah and you you see how they act and you go why do you have a bodyguard <laughs> who's <laughs> coming for you who, who the fuck knows who you are <laughs> yeah. well because you dress like you know liberace is why Yo, you know just, someone I, wants to rob you i right? just had this conversation and i sent the meme from american gangster of like you're wearing a clown suit <laughs> i just sent that meme I, like, like yesterday i sent yeah. that meme to somebody yeah but this you know when you when you sit down and you get to know them yeah like I talked to one whale in, in Vegas. Like he was like, "Hey man, I want, I want, I want, I want to know like what is what it feels like for people to like want to take a picture with you or you know why why do people like you? Why do people <laughs> like you? Like, like, it's he fucked goes, up. "How do I buy that? Like how do I get that? Wow. Man, get out of here! Right? Really? Yeah. Does he actually? Is that a yeah, question? Yeah, it was a with? it was a great insight. Good question. What a yeah. crazy question! Yeah. How do I buy yeah, that? Yeah, how do you buy that? Buy a sports because he goes, I've eaten everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because the team won't like it. He goes, true. he goes, I've eaten everything, I've fucked everything, I've killed everything, right? Jesus he Christ. He goes, to, to get this kind of like validation in life, he goes, look, man, I have perfect family because I was born into it. I have perfect wife and son because I can afford it. I have everything. I've eaten everything. I have all this. Look, I'm, I'm spending 15, 30 grand a hand, right? For what? Right? He's like, he goes, he goes, people are like rats. And I'm like, what? He goes, did you know rats can't swim? I go, I don't know that. He goes, Put a rat in the bucket, it'll drown. But if you put a stick in the middle of the bucket, the the rat will survive because it has hope. He goes, gambling is that. Is that we fifteen grand it's just relative, yeah, right? Yeah, a yeah. dollar, whatever you yeah. go, oh you get it. It's like like, <laughs> yeah. oh you feel alive, right? And you're right. like, huh, interesting. He goes, 
So you, I'm born this way. He's had every single rush yeah. except the fame rush. And the love. Mm. Like being infamous is one thing. He could go, he could go, you know, you know shoot true. someone or yeah. embezzle money and then you're infamous, right? But how do you get that where <clears throat> someone just looks at you and goes, you're my friend. That's just crazy. Right? Yeah. How do crazy. you buy that? You can't buy it. You that, can't. Right? No, yeah. you can't. That's real crazy. Yeah. Because you have to attain adoration by people. You know, like actors, if you're in enough movies or you do things they really like, they go, oh, you have given me moments and experiences in a theater that are great. Like, I really like the movies you've done, which make me feel good and I enjoy them. Yeah. And especially if you do a lot of them, they feel like they're connected to you in some way, especially, you know, you're into cars. And if the movies are about cars, they're like, oh, you're like one of me, but yeah. you're like the successful, famous version. Mm -hmm. So they, they kind of feel this connection to you yeah. through the amount of content you've created. That's right. And Cameron, you know, the cinematographers and great directors have always told me that the camera doesn't lie. You know, it's like, there are people play superheroes because there's something in them that we look at them, like, yeah, there's superhero elements. Like, uh -huh. like someone said, like a Sly, I did a movie with Sylvester Stallone, he goes, he was explaining this to me. He goes, I go, how do you become Sylvester Stallone? Like, how do you do that? Like, how <laughs> That's do you a become, good question, too. Yeah, how do you become Arnold Schwarzenegger? And he yeah. goes, well, you, you can't really do that. You're right, like, yeah, you got to do You got to be who got to be, right? He goes, look at Jimmy Woods. He goes, he's never going to be Batman. And I was right. like, you're right. Good point. He's a great actor, but he's never going to be Black Batman. Yeah. Right? So. But he's a, he was a mafia, good mafia guy. He was a good mafia oh, yeah. guy. Like Jim. Oh, James Wo James oh Woods. Jimmy Woods. I was thinking James Kahn for some reason. James Kahn was a good mafia. Oh, no, James yeah. Woods got the shit beat out of him by fucking Robert Casino, De Niro right? in Casino, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. But he's a great, great you know, actor. plays a great con artist yeah. kind of guy. Yeah. And if you want to pull your hair out, I recommend following him on Twitter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he's not working. Yeah. <laughs> He, tweet, sucks. he yeah. tweeted himself out of a career, didn't he? Horrible. Yeah. Horrible. Anyone tweet themselves back into a career recently? Wesley Snipes, maybe, is resurrected. I'm happy to see him come back. I like Wesley Snipes. Right. How do you not love Wesley Snipes? What did he do wrong? A tax evasion. Tax evasion. But why, but, but why can't it be in movies? <laughs> What's that got to no, do with being in movies? Can't. Look, Nick Cage is in movies after tax evasion because he's paying for yeah. his taxes. Like, I, I want to see Wesley I more than <laughs> Nick totally. at this point. I've seen Nick. Every day, I yeah. hung out with uh, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> I hung out with Jay Leno. Uh, I don't know a year ago, and he was. I said, "Oh, it must be cool. You know, you're doing Jay Leno's garage. You can like write off your cars and your taxes." He goes, "Hey, you don't fuck around with the IRS." He goes, "You think Wesley and Nick Cage choose their own movies? No, IRS chooses their movies." So I was like, "Oh shit, <laughs> fucking cold as ice." Great advice. Do not don't fuck, fuck around with, with the IRS. IRS. Yeah. Do not do that. I saw Jay at Cars and Coffee this weekend. He one up the fuck out of me. He parked. I I'm very excited because I just bought that old Ferrari and I just had it. Brought it to Cars and Coffee. Like, yeah, look at this. But fucking Jay rolls in in an unrestored Mercedes Gullwing oh. with like racing numbers on the side of it. Wow. Yeah, I found it in a shed. Engine was sitting over there. It was good to go though. I've been driving it ever since. Bought wow. it for 80 grand. Like, okay, Jay. How do you compete with him though? You can't. Maybe. No, no, you can't. He's, we're just lucky that Jay is like very nice and patient and he has, he has real patience with fans. Yeah. Would you say you're very patient with fans? I've, I've, you know, Jay, when I did the show with Jay, he actually put some, ingrained something into me. He was like, you know, he said, hey, kid, so uh, these kids these kids were driving by us when we were shooting and they were asking for pictures and stuff. And I was like, he goes, yeah, pull over, man. We'll take the pictures. And, I, and he looks over and he goes, just take the picture, okay? And I go, what do you mean? He goes, like, I met everybody, man. And it's just easier in your life. And the reason we're here is like, take the picture. Don't, don't take the, don't just blow people off. Take the picture, right? And I'm it's like. what they want. Yeah, he goes, otherwise don't go outside. <laughs> right? Yeah, because like, yeah. oh, it's not your world anymore. It's like you are part of the Disneyland attraction, right? So that is good advice. Or leave, or yeah. leave, man. You know, and, and I was like, yo, this guy, you know, is ingrained in me. And even like Dwayne, you know, when we first met on like Fast Five, you know, like I was like, dude, you you stop and talk to everybody. And he goes, dude, that's we have to do that. That's the gig. Yeah, I mean, you make you make. How the fuck does he get anything? How does that guy get anything done? Uh, I he, mean, he if you, if you have to often, stop and talk to everybody, how do you get it. anywhere? <laughs> he squats it. He fucking bench presses it is what he does. You know? Yeah. That's, yeah that like dude monster, has some right? work ethic. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Yeah. I, I mean, that all that stuff is not fake because when we were shooting in Puerto Rico, I would go, like, you know, I had a call time at like 4 o'clock or something, and I see him in the elevator coming from his... Uh, 
his cardio. He's been yeah. working out. Yeah. No, he yeah, gets up at yeah, three. Yeah, he does like that yeah. early morning bodybuilder cardio type that's thing. That's all real. For know? sure. I mean, he grew up with like nothing. And that's why he has that work ethic for yeah. sure. Conversely, today I worked, I did work out with my trainer in the morning, eight o'clock this morning, which means I got up at 6 30, had breakfast, did cardio from seven to eight, and then worked out from eight to nine with the trainer. At the end of that hour, I said, we're going to be switching to afternoons. <laughs> <laughs> today. Today. Ugh, that the fucking rock. Can't imagine being in the presence of that work ethic and not wanting to like just. Bust your fucking ass. Yeah, well, it's if, also it's a movie. Come no, on, but, right, right, right. Well, but yeah. still, just, yeah. if, you, if you're, if you're, yeah, it's still. It's a movie. Like it's not like you go to set and you're like, go. <laughs> it's like That's come it. to set. It's like, hey, anybody want some coffee? It's a good point. Like, oh, you guys need some tea. Hey, would you? <laughs> we're gonna go through the rehearsal. This is where you might stand. All right, Even you guys can go put your makeup it's on. Hurry up and wait. Yeah, come on, this, <laughs> it ain't like that. Like we are so lucky in this business. Like it's. It to me it's a paid vacation, man. I, That's a great uh, attitude cool. about it, dude. But it is. It's yeah. the only job where I could show up with nothing. I can. Sh- I try it. You <laughs> go with a garbage bag. It just has like my ID, maybe a toothbrush, right? But you can go with nothing. Someone picks you up, pick, takes you to the airport. Yeah, no. Puts you, you on a flight. Nothing. Picks you up, takes you out, gives you an envelope of cash. He goes, "Hey, you're retarded, so you can't even go to the bank." <laughs> <laughs> you're an eight-year-old. Is what you're saying? You're right? an eight-year-old who has yeah. no, and they're all your parents. Yeah. And they go, "We'll Her call DM you. Is yeah. All right, we'll call you a hundred times to wake you up, to pick you up at the hotel or wherever you're staying. They take you to a set. They put you in a trailer. They go, "Wait here. There's coffee, <laughs> TV. There's the internet. Here's a video game. Someone comes." They go, hey, your face, you didn't shave, you didn't comb your hair, wash your face, put makeup on. They go, here's some words for you to say, (laughs) right? Here's some clothes for you to wear. And then artistically, you're just free. You can go, okay, this is, you know, this is what I'm gonna do. This is like, you know, you can just play pretend, man. And then I'm hungry, I'm thirsty. You've been on a set, yeah. like, dude. They bring you things. Yeah, if an actor to me is like, if you can't see that, and you can't see the men and women out there like carrying shit. Like these are grandpas and aunts and mothers that are outside working. And we, as soon as you call cut, you get to go to a trailer. Someone carries an umbrella. I'm like, I'm a grown man. <laughs> you have know? a umbrella carrier. Do you, ever get, do you ever get annoyed at that level of service sometimes? And you're like, look, man, I can get my own whatever. I appreciate what you're doing here, but. Well, I, I think it's one. a great opportunity. It's a teaching moment. To go, like, I read an interview with Paul Newman, and he somebody asked him, why don't you have an assistant in your entourage? And, like, somebody pick up your, he said, I have to go pick up my dry cleaning or my wife's dry cleaning. And someone asked, you know, why don't you have an assistant do that? You're Paul Newman. And he goes, I'm a grown man, son. Yeah. You know, I can do that myself. Yeah. And I was like, that's the way to do it. Yeah. And so... When the umbrella person comes, if they're gonna get fired because I got wet, <laughs> yeah. which people get fired because continuity, all these, you know, there's, there's, it's like a, it's like a military structure in the movie set. Mm-hmm. If you're a PA or a, you know, third AD, you and you don't hold the umbrella and you can't like find the actor, you will get fired. Yeah, right. And so that I'm aware is like, okay, this kid is here, he's living the dream. Let me make sure he's protected, and yeah. I can tell, hey, dude. You know, you don't need to do this. Tell your boss, I can walk myself to the bathroom. <laughs> I won't be shooting up on you. I, I, right? like, I won't be in the <laughs> porta potty all like, uh, can't get sung out. Right? Can you so, get me uh, a belt and a um, clean needle? <laughs> um. Can you call uh, Jim on your phone? I think his name is Jim. Tell, <laughs> tell the guy at the gate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's coming, and uh, just, just point him to my trailer. Yes. And you know the PA is gonna make it. If he's like, uh, I don't know where to find it, but I'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> Can I borrow twenty bucks? Can I borrow twenty bucks, kid? <laughs> but yeah, uh, so. yeah. You have a good attitude about that, man. I'm. It's it's good that you you. I I think you you see it even fucking more so than I do, and I think I have a pretty good attitude about it. I appreciate a good crafty. I've had, we have, we've, Zach and I have worked on many a sets where it's trunk crafty. It's really, yeah, it's really yeah. just a van uh, that has a trunk with uh, several 7 Eleven bags with snacks, snacks in it. And that's, snacks and coolers. That's yeah. about the limit of, of it. It's in the middle of the goddamn desert. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I come from that. You know, the, 
the birth of Han came from movie Better Luck Tomorrow. Right. Yeah. You actually jumped uh, movie franchises, yeah. which is pretty cool. Yeah. So I never saw Better Luck Tomorrow. I'm well, sorry to say. It's okay. It's okay. It was a little indie is film. Is it good? I think so. All right. I we'll think it still it holds. There. And Han's in high school. Oh, he's on in high school? Yeah. He drives, All right. He drives an old, I think it's a 66 Mustang. Right? Okay, and, cool. Um, and that's where Han was born. And that, our craft service was five sticks of Wrigley Spearmint gum spread out. You know, that comes in five in a pack of like the 20 <laughs> Oh, donuts. they fan it. They, yeah. <laughs> they like, and it was a box of Entenmann donuts. And that's how we started, man. You know? Oh, yeah. Young, look at that. Man. Directed Smoking by Justin Lin, who directed Tokyo oh, Drift. Shit. Yes. Wait, who uh, who is who is the other actor on the other side of that? On the, on the right? Yeah, I recognize that face. Who he is that? He is um, on, I think he's on General Hospitals. Oh. He Maybe plays, it's not who I thought yeah. it was then. But the middle guy, he's in Tokyo Drift as well. He <laughs> plays Earl. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. We have to check out Better Luck tomorrow. Yeah. I want to see that. Yeah. And how are you enjoying doing like YouTube content and stuff and social media <sighs> content? So hard. <laughs> it is. There's it's no craft. There's can't... no craft services. <laughs> no, 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 not that. It's, fucking around. it's it's so it's so it's 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 a little hard because it's you're self editing yourself, right? And then it's like it's like when as an actor after you you rap, you're like, yeah, man, the editor is, and the director is going to handle that. I don't have to censor. I go. Yeah, I look at a picture. and I go, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm selfie. What am I? I'm not doing this. Like, what yeah. are you, cornball? It's so hard. I don't yeah. know what to post. So I just try to focus on, like, other people and positive stuff. Right? That's and good. That's, that's it. That's It's so hard. I'm like, yeah, a lot of car stuff. What's going on with this little yellow 914 I'm seeing oh, around yeah. here? What's that's, this about? That's Billy Bob. That's a 74 914 that is uh, kind of the inspiration to... Of a, a series of 914s I'm building. With, a series? Yeah, with Mike Spagnola, um, you know, a buddy of mine. And uh, we've just been embraced with the 914 world. This one is a small block Chevy, and then I bought oh, it off fuck. of, right? <laughs> okay. It came out as a Renegade kit from the 90s, so uh -huh. it's even barred, right? So when I got it, the interior was like perfect, and it just had this like weird, like, like if I said, if Hulk Hogan drove a 914, this is the one he would have. This is like a Hulk Hogan of 914s, right? I bet it's scary with a fucking V8. Scary, right? uh, unnecessary. Like, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. overpowered, but it's, uh, in that era of you know Renegade in the 90s, which I knew nothing about. Like they're still started, around. Yeah, they and still got still, kids. Yeah, in Vegas. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, what a great opportunity to like, study this era of yeah. these swaps. So yeah. we resurrected it, you know. And Eric Aguilar, this, that's his garage. He's basically my mentor. Who uh, has been teaching me the L24, the the uh, the uh, Datsun, the Datsun yeah. engine? So we're building a uh, 71 East African Rally, you know. Like yeah, thing. I saw that too. So tell me the story about that red car. So it's it, it's sort of is it a tribute or is it an actual rally car that you no, bought? No, it's it's going to be a it, like a tribute interpretation. Uh -huh. It was inspired from that East African Rally. Um, you know, l l livery, right? From I think it was like what, seven, like late seventies yeah, yeah. when they were dominating that that rally, right? So I, I, I would see pictures of that car. I go, oh, oh that's like the so Seiko sweet. Logo. The two forty rally yeah. car, like the gray and no, red this blue. one. This it's, one. Oh, this is it. Yeah, yeah. It's, East, it's the East African Safari Rally, like champion. I think they for like two or three years they were dominating. Seventy nine, eighty, eighty one, I think. Or so I, s I drove a. A uh, 240Z, I think it was a 73 early car that somebody was prepping for the Peking to Paris rally. So it was really like lifted with a big rack and the whole thing. I drove it off road. It was sick. The, the gray, the gray and, car. Yeah, the, the father and son one. Yes. Yeah, that's. I sweet. drove that sick. car and it was really really nice. Yeah, oh, look at that, that, right? Dude. So so yeah. that is the the race car. Yeah. And so you're gonna do that. So we've got a lift. We've got fog lights. We've got that one's a little lightly crashed, I think. But uh, but stickers. I like the Seiko. We got Dunlop. But we're not Italian. doing any of that. Oh, you're not? No, Clean no, paint. No, no. So what, what I learned through this process of working with this car is like Eric Aguilar, he's the doctor. They called him. So I met him at my upholstery guy, Rogelio's upholstery. I was getting, picking up upholstery for this truck, this little Datsun truck. And they said, you got to meet the doc, man. He's he's the doctor in our community, the, in the, the Latino community. I go, doctor of what? He goes, 240Zs. Someone they call the doc is someone you need to meet. Yeah. Doesn't matter yeah. what the fuck they're the doc of. Yeah. <laughs> you figure that out later. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. Someone goes, I want yeah, you yeah. to meet the doc. Yeah. You go, 
Yeah, that sounds yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I'm getting into, but it'll be smart. It's going to be a good one. Yeah. Um, this is rad, this thing. Yeah, so he we, we started talking, and then I was like, yo, who are you? And how come people don't know about you? He was he's quarter mile record breaker, right? He's, you know, Honda King. He's was, you know, he was sponsored by Motul. And, I, and he's this amazing... Like I call him like the Mr. Miyagi of like JDMs and cars. And I said, why do the people call you dog? He goes, well, back in the 80s, I used to go to junkyards and resurrect these Zs because they're such beautiful cars and basically sell them for nothing. And he goes, dude, I can, I know these cars like in and out. Like he has a, a bucket of bolts and screws and you can pick one. And he'll tell you he'll what tell it's you for. He'll tell you exactly yeah. what it is. And I go, this is Mr. Yeah. Miyagi. And I, <laughs> yeah. but I asked him, I said, with all your walls of trophies and all these cool cars you've worked on and have, what's your biggest like accomplishment? And he goes, that I'm welcomed wherever I go. Nice. And I was like, ah, oh, this is my guy. This, mm-hmm. is like, this is the older brother, mentor, father figure I've been looking for, right? And he's taking me under his wing and he's expanded. How old is this dude? He's about 50 oh, okay. something right <laughs> now, right? And um, he's just, you know, I, I I look at him and I go, I'm so thankful that he's taking me under his wing and he's started at the beginning and go, if you're gonna drive this car, if you're gonna own this, let me teach you everything. Let me teach you instead of buying parts, like we can actually get the old ones working and then you can go buy the new ones. But yeah. let's blueprint the engine. Let me introduce you to all these people. Like the guy who, you know, uh, you know bored our heads, like you know, did all the head work, Joe, he has a little shack. In, you know, behind a staple Center, dude. That sounds right. Mm-hmm. right. Everything about that lines up. Yeah, and yep. you learn from <laughs> the Bean Bandits. You know who the Bean Bandits are? No. no. They're, they're the guys who won the, f- the first three years of the NHRA. Oh, really? The, family the Bean from Bandits? Yeah. So there was a Mexican family from, they lived <laughs> in San, right? And they were killing it. So the first NHRA champions were the Bean Bandits, man. And, and Joe said, I asked him, I go, where did you learn how to like, you know, like work on these heads. And he goes, as a seven year old, he went to San Diego because. I guess it, they have a book. Yeah. And it, San it, Diego Drag Racing and the Bean Bandits. There yeah. you go. So amazing history, right? Yeah. So he said at that time as a kid, no one would teach Hispanic kids this, you know, this skill set. Like, mm-hmm. where are you going to learn? They're a right. bunch of poor kids from the hood. So a group of them got to go visit huh. the Bean Bandits. And there was an old man in the corner, like working on this head. And, and Joe goes up to him and he goes, what are you doing? Because everybody wanted to talk about the engine, how fast everything was going, or the, you know, the interior and stuff. But he went over and he's just looking at this old man. And, and that's when he fell in love with working on heads, right? So I got to meet, I get to meet all of these amazing people. So yeah. going back to the doc, the, the, the delivery on that is, uh, everyone that's touching the car you know, I feel like I want to have a piece of them, like a memory, like, you know, their logo or whatever. Yeah. But I'm not, I don't want to do stickers, man, because it's going to peel off. It's going to eventually come off. So because of this process, I got to meet Sal and JC from Coastline. They're, they're, they have this, like, you know, Maserati or, you know, like collision repair shop. And I got to meet them through Eric. And and uh, actually, I met him through a, a, another car buddy who, who was helping with me with suspension, teaching me uh-huh. about suspension. And this Mexican American family learned that like the ghost painting style for the low riders oh, yeah. from back in the day, right? And his father came to America from Mexico City to learn how to work with Bondo because Bondo was for like the rich people back in the day. And he's just a fabricator, right? So he stayed in LA, raised his kids, his kids learned this craft of this low riding painting, but now they're, you know, in modern world that, that skill set is used by a very limited group. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm sitting there going, they're teaching me this and I go, dude, yeah. no one has incorporated this into the JDM world properly. And I'm like, I could do all the, the library in ghost paint. So, that could be cool. Right? Ooh. So yeah, yeah. The, the house of color paint where some of it like comes out only at night yeah. during reflection. So I'm going, all right, certain like logos, let's say we have Motul as like, they're friends of ours, right? And they're supportive. So during the day we'll have them. Then they're, they're, they're and evening, then night, it, it, it flip flops. Yeah, flops to a different car. Yeah, right? yeah. You know? so, being able to be creative like that. That'd be fun. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's I mean, cool, man. I am I like crazy paint. I like crazy interiors. You should you know, you should do an interior like my Safari nine eleven. Dude, that is we should get you some bus fabric. I 
tell you that if people are not aware of this, what what is that? It's bus fabric it's from, from it's bus fabric. Yeah, it's from like a fucking bus. From what bus? Uh, what country? I mean, I don't it. I don't know the make and model bus. It's from there's a, a supplier that has a variety of bus fabrics for all kind of buses, and that's where we got it. But I know that bus fabric. I've sat, I feel like <laughs> you probably I've have sat on it. that bus. Yeah, you it's not American. It no, no, it's European. It's a European, European bus fabric. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, I have some extra. I can't, of that. Yeah. I mean, where, where I'd be I honored it? on the where, fucking seats. You put centers in the seats. But I don't think if you're gonna paint the car red. I can't red, do that. But you know why? Because is the car gonna stay red? No, no. It, it, that your car, that bus fabric, Matt. Is next level shit. It's that, fun. That's not. That's third level. That's third rail. <laughs> no, because it, it, it makes no, it it like, no sense. <laughs> like, how does the brain work? They go, yo, this is a Porsche Safari. This. How much is that car? Like two hundred grand, maybe. Like, no, not that much. But it's it's, it's not, not cheap. cheap. No, right? it's not you go, cheap. Yeah, man, I'm gonna put bus fabric. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's dumb. And it's dope. So you gotta I see. He's done some other ones. He's one up to me. He's done one since, so that's number 14 that he's built. Lee Keen is the guy's name who builds oh. those. They're all like that. You ba pretty much just choose your color um, and and your interior, right? But he's one up to me since. I, mine was the craziest one he had done to that point. He's since done full cow, like, like the fucking furry, like the cow with fur on it. Uh, he's also done. Yours is better. That's a better. He the also did one. You know that mat that people have when they're kids. That's like the that looks like a almost like a cartoon city with like roads and buildings and oh, shit. Oh yeah, yeah. He yeah. made. He did an interior of that, which I think is pretty fun. My favorite is still mine. Wait, did you find the cow, Zach? Not, he's not over yet. on. Um, I think you just look hashtag the Keen Project rather than Lee's page. Um, yeah, check out all the safaris at hashtag the Keen Project. I think he's got orders for fucking years of these things. I think so. We were supposed to all go on a uh, That's beautiful. Uh, a big drive together uh, in like 800 miles. And uh, because of COVID, it got... Yeah, got, he just did his East Coast one. Got shit canned. Yeah, that. look at that. I mean, so that it was good. He said nobody got stuck and nobody crashed. Wow. That looks awesome, doesn't awesome. it? Okay. Doesn't look like a good time? Yeah. But if you build a Z, like we could do one out here. It's just like two people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If I, can, you, I, I don't know if I'm going to make it like an off-road car. You know why? Because it has Webers on it, and, and I don't want to go through that. No, anyway. you just need air filters, I know, but dude. I, I just, <laughs> it's just, it's just it's they've so, solved this with science. You need air to find filters. the dock of air filters. Yeah. Them dudes did Peking to Paris in a fucking Z. I know, but they I They had air filters, I, that's I, all. I, I, I'm, I'm starting to get so attached to the car. I don't want to get it dirty. <laughs> all right. Like, I don't want to take it off road. That's in the seventy one. They're so these cars are so rare now. Like the idea of it crashing into a rock because mm. I'm not a good driver. You know, it's gonna crash it. I'm gonna crash it into something. <laughs> well, <laughs> are you are you gonna build it like the the Peking car where it's like lifted and on, are you gonna style like that or are you just I gonna kind of do? It's evolving daily. Okay. Yeah, because Rob over at Z Car Garage up in the Bay, he has a black label KW suspension that I got to test drive. Oh, That'd be nice, dude. I would love. So I would love for it to look so like a safari, car. right? And then keep it street, and then eventually, if you know, change it up. You could do it with a street suspension, but just like a tire with some sidewall. Yeah. So it kind of kept that sort yeah, of that rally look. car look, but without the extra like lift. tarmac rally setup. Yeah, tarmac rally setup. Basically, but but a rally car that looks like a rally livery, but then with the stance. Where it has like a like the stance. like your white car, yeah, that could be cool. That'd be cool. That could definitely be cool. Right. I would fuck with that. Yeah, I imagine we have a million questions from people. Zach, are there any that are worth <laughs> that are related to conversations we've had today? I didn't read through them. We yet. take I did, all right. I organized them. Can I show you something? Yes. Can what I have you? you? Can I show you? Uh, What's in the bag? Can I show you one of my proudest He's, things? Okay. Song is opening so that, the that, bag. The nine fourteen, right? Uh huh. Uh, it's called Viceroy. Okay. And what's Viceroy about? Vice, it's just the name that I came up with, right? Okay. And then uh, I felt like it was very regal. It felt like very European because I'm Asian. I want. I don't want to. So Viceroy felt very regal. Anyway, the the render uh, render at Glenn Cordell. He designed the, the steering wheel. Let's I see. What we got here. I, I, I know you've driven a lot of Porsches. Look yeah. at that. This is very pretty. Okay, so we've got a three-spoke steering wheel, mm -hmm. 
resembling a sort of Momo prototypo style, but it's big. It's like a 365 or 380. 300, 380? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of big. Factory is 37... 370 or 377? So you're going bigger than stock. Just a little bit. Okay, yeah. okay. It's got a really nice ridge on the front of it, though, for your yeah. thumb. Yeah. And the back is fucking wood. Yes. Which is going to be really nice on the back of your hands. Yeah. What are these gonna? Are you gonna sell these? Is yeah, this a thing? This is a prototype. It's made this in is Italy. Cool as hell. By Tactico, these Porsche guys. It's a beautiful piece. What is this gonna sell for, dude? I think I don't know. Where's what camera are we on, Zach? Here's I don't the know. A. Well, what would you buy that for? I mean, a prototypo Ooh, a is about bag. a two hundred and fifty to three hundred dollar buy-in, right? I yeah. would say that. But we're only doing nine hundred fourteen of them. I would say that's a four hundred and fifty to five hundred dollar wheel. Dude, yeah. The wood back I is I think so. Sweet. It, the wood back sweet. is a really, really nice touch. That's very cool. You know why? Be not just because it's like a softer feel, but because it adds it vibration adds vibration resistance. It acts as a damper. And also it it adds a thickness. The Momo wheels are very thin metal, right? Mm -hmm. That piece is a, is a thin that gives it enough Dude, thickness cool. and substance. That's yeah. very nice. You the can put your name on that? Uh, no, it'd just be called Viceroy. The Magnus Cordell. sold out putting his name on that shit. No, but Glenn, Glenn Cordell designed it. His name is going to be on it. That's a really nice yeah. piece, dude. Yeah. He, Very cool. He, Are you going to sell them in more than one size? Or are they all going to be this size? Uh, I think people will want the 350, but it, it covers up the gauges, man. Yeah, but you'll but you find out what size people is most popular for 911s as well, because this is probably too well, big for a 911. Well, there's the uh, only option for Momo is 350. So is that they, it? Yeah, they don't, okay. make, they don't make a prototypo at 380. In that case, we gotta. When, cool. Before you leave, let's. That's hold why it, we made that. Before you leave, we gotta hold this up it. to my 911 and see yeah. how it would look in the gauges there. Yeah. This is the shit, dude. Mm -hmm. What a nice piece. You'll Thank sell you. those. You, you, I, I mean, I see. I see five hundred dollars there. Absolutely. Cool. That's a nice piece. Thank you. Very cool. Thank you. Maybe you want to see what the car looks like? Yes. Maybe a suggestion, if you want, and not a criticism by any means, but maybe a double-wrapped leather option for a little more girth. Well, we're going to... It's pretty good, I though. I think we're gonna, it's going to be this, like, injected foam, because it's too hard. We, I, I like this, but... You it, want a little more squish? A little bit. Just yeah. a tad. As long as you can't bend it. As yeah. long as it's like, you know, you can pr you can grip it pretty good without well, bending it. Well, but we're yeah, going yeah, to do a destroy test with this. That's <laughs> <laughs> Don't destroy it too hard. What's in the binder? Viceroy oh, 914. Look at that. Oh, this is a finished rendering? No, that's, uh, yeah, well, no, we haven't finished the cover. That's the rendering. Oh, wow. So, okay, where we're can going. I, can I so this the is the beginning of that car. What, what camera should we like here? Here we go. We'll Again go by Glenn camera. Cordell. It's he did the rendering for that. It's uh, wide like the, body. I like the flares. Yeah, wide yeah. body, fender flares, sort of like uh, the Z, but the really wide in the back. So what's the, what? Tell me about this wheel choice. It's like a four spoke in the front, and then yeah. like a Panasport in the back. What's that about? Which was inspired by pictures from the rally car 914s, because they would put these Panasports in the back because. They just had to do it, and I, I love the look. I like kind of the offset look, and I was like, ooh, if we could create our own version of that, you know, it's mm. kind of cool. Tough know? to get this view in real life, but what the view I really like, the from rear above view is very, very, very good. Yeah. Yeah, it almost looks like a Lamborghini Miura from that view, doesn't yeah. it? It's, the, it's, it's a the, tough little bitch, this car. The, uh, very nice. The louvers are inspired by the GT3 RS louvers. You know? It's very cool. Oh, yeah. I like you got the wood shift knob. That's appropriate. The yeah. 917 style wooden shift knob here. Yeah. That's very good. We found your aluminum speed holes in the <laughs> yeah. uh, floorboards. Always popular. Always, Always good. popular. Mm -hmm. And the wheel looks good on this dash. Yeah. Yeah, dude. This is going to be kick ass. Yeah, so, just, you. so your wheel setup is like these guys, the Sonico rally car right here. Oh, there it is. Yeah. That's yeah. The, We're that's trying the to do center lock, right though. there. We're trying to do center lock. Sorry about that yeah. for the audience. I just smashed my microphone with a binder and I'm sure it resonated. Apologies. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that. going to be very cool. It looks so sick, right? It, it does look cool. It does. I, I like it. Are you going to go fog lights? Oh, yeah. We have custom fog lights there. Yeah, I recommend. That, like the CB, but then we have these ones that will, you'll be able to screw off the top. Oh, cool. Right? Because I, I think rarely do you ever, like a city driver ever use it. This consumer is not going to be using it. Was that what they were, you guys were like <laughs> measuring this thing oh, with consumer. like laser? Yeah. I forgot. Yeah, You're yeah. doing a run of these. Yeah, 10. 
Are they all going to have V8s in them? No, 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 the 914 is a fun little car. Yeah. But what transmission are we using with the 3.2? Well, I think we're go we want to do sequential transmission. Oh, awesome. So that'll we, be really fun. Whoa. So we're talking to people, Mike. That'll be a good time. Yeah. So we anything but the standard 914 gearbox, which is a piece the, of shit. The 901, which I have in my car now, mm. which But mm. you know, why it, it's a piece of shit now, but why can't we like, because I, I was talking to one of the guys that built V8s this weekend. I drove up to Petaluma to go to the 914 meet, and we took the 914. And an older, you know, an older gentleman that built a uh, V8 back in like early 2000s said, "Hey, you should just, you know, change over to a Boxster transmission. It's going to make it easier on your shifting because it's long gears on this." And I said, "But you drove it that way back then." I go, "Teach me how to drive it," and he goes. All right, kid, you really want to know? <laughs> <laughs> like Clint Eastwood, man. He's like, yeah, you really want to know, kid? Yeah. You're not ready. Here's the secret. <laughs> Number two. And I'm like, what? He goes, stay in second gear. Never never start in first. <laughs> you ha you'll have the transmission forever. <laughs> right, have a movie. Now go on your way, Chan. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Jesus. And then there's the montage of you training in the car, and he's like, you're not going to win. And clicking off the stopwatch. <laughs> Third act, you have to go to the race. I found first gear. <laughs> Man, that the third you could end up back in first very it's just uh, yeah. God sequential is the right move. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah, very good. Yeah, because it's not going to be for you know like some. I think it's going to be a gentleman driver that owns this car. You know, it needs to be well balanced. And yeah, the good thing about the 914 community is that they call themselves Q-tips. Right, that when they take a picture, it's a bunch of cute red, white hair <laughs> dudes, right, like old. <laughs> white fat guys that look like Q-tips. <laughs> That's kind of funny. And they're so happy to see like some person that isn't part oh, of the AA. Welcome, AA. son. <laughs> right. Welcome, like, son. You're the future. <laughs> <laughs> You're the future. Oh, my God, the, dude. I right. bought a DeLorean, and they started talking about me, like the DeLorean community, and I was just not about it. I yeah. was like, I don't want to be I don't want to be your guy. Yeah. You must carry the torch yeah. forward, Farah. But, but they're my people, because if you're into 914, you were never the cool crowd guys. No. Right? I never fit. I, I never got car. invited to parties, man. I, you know, I was, I was at homecoming at the window, going, <laughs> "Jolly, it must be good to have a girlfriend, right?" So, I get, <laughs> have you I been get, to a high school reunion yet? Since you got once, super famous, once, yeah. Did you enjoy it? Nah, nah, no, nah. Mm. Because, because you go in thinking like, "I'll show them," <laughs> I'll, sh I'll show up in the Fast and Furious car. Right? Did you tell me no, you did? Jump no, in the I didn't know. Okay. Okay. You, you show up and you go there and you realize, what are you gonna? What's what's this like vendetta or revenge thing, man? People are like, you know, they're living life. Like, yeah. like life is hard for most people, right? So, yeah, I, you know. So anyway. I didn't mean a vendetta revenge yeah. thing. I just yeah, meant yeah. like, yeah, man, you did a fucking no. Because growing up, now and you're, growing now up, you're, now you're somebody. Yeah, well, growing up, you know, you you. I was in an environment where you. Going, I'm going to show these people. Yeah, you know, that's yeah. you know, that's why I, I was driven to try to be somebody. You know, like what is that, and where am I going to find that? And fortunately, I found it through acting. So I left, you know, those places. Going, I'm going to show you that I'm not some just like some Chinaman. You know, like really, yeah. you know, I, yeah, I grew up yeah. in there. I'm 48, so we come from a different time. You know Fucking I mean? Koreans don't age. It's just bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking ageless. Yeah. No, we do. One like day, you're, fucking 25. You're, 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 you're young, and then you just keel over and look like Mr. Young. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so one day, I'll come like five years later, and I'll be like, oh, you know, <laughs> bald and yeah. short. Right? Considering yeah. your fucking mu movie war universe almost goes in reverse. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, yeah. I think, are you, st is, are all, is every other Fast movie occur before Tokyo Drift, I think? Almost all of them? 
Uh, well, At what point do they occur this after one, Tokyo Drift? This current one. <laughs> so yeah, so you just made, you just made <laughs> that's amazing. eight fucking or five prequels. <laughs> like, yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. Like how weird is yeah. that? It's incredible. From I mean, yeah. casting like what are they going to do? Like so, we're going backwards as he gets older. Yeah, yeah. bold move, guys. Fucking yeah. Benjamin Button in yeah. this bitch. But I, I look, I look. I look younger now. My wife says I look younger now because I don't look so fat. You know? Hell yeah. yeah! There you go. Yeah. Did you ever? Do you ever have any uh, any say in your movie cars? Do they give you any input into your what your character drives? Well, I had a uh, FD pre Tokyo Drift. Oh, really? An RX seven that, that I never really drove. It was my parents bribed for me not to be an actor get the fuck out of here yeah, dude so when i that you know, is some irony you, know, you end up drunk. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. so in 95 i went all in i was like i'm not going to be a notary public because <laughs> you were making all that yeah. money i'm not gonna yeah i'm not but gonna you, be you were making yeah. 35 a second <laughs> <laughs> i'm not i'm not going big time man you know uh but I went all in. My parents were like, nah, that's not why, why. My, you know, my mom was a housekeeper at one time. So her going, I didn't do that for you to go yeah. be an actor. She goes, I don't, we don't come from that world. You go, you can't do that. You can't show up to Hollywood and think like you are going to be some movie star. Different conversation at the table. Like my parents don't come yeah. from that world. So for me, the oldest son, the only son to go, mom, yeah, I know you were washing dishes and killing people's toilets, but hey, I want to go and try to be this actor, right? For her, it was insane. So uh, they said, "All right, well, you go on your way. We don't, we can't support you, or we don't." Did you have to do like horribly demeaning jobs while trying to find acting work? Were yeah, you like, yeah, you know, some, at the best advice I got from like old timers when I met them, they're actors. I was like, hey, you know. The starving actor thing, they're like, yeah, son, you know, let me tell you something. Like, if you're a starving actor, you're kind of a dumb actor. <laughs> In this country, there's no reason to starve. Like, you know, come on, bootstrap, go get some jobs. And, yeah, I man, I was, you know, dishwasher, caterer, bartender, tutor, mm -hmm. courier. And I never starved, man. I, I was able to pay for my acting classes. I was able to get to, to, to the theater to do all the indie films. So, I mean, it was hard. Yeah, right? yeah. It's demeaning because you're a nobody, but you're a dreamer, man. So the fact that I was born at a time where I could come to LA and just even pursue that. Mm -hmm. Kids today, dude, like my rent was 500 yeah. for my own apartment. Like, how, you do, how do you afford to be an actor today? I don't know. It's fucking expensive. And fame is here. like crazy. Like YouTube, like people are famous. Back then, it was so elusive, right? It was so romantic. And now, and there was structure to... If you're gonna be an actor, you train here, you get an agent, mm -hmm. you do your extra work. Like I was an extra and you know, did the whole path. So it was like very pragmatic. And like if you just do it for the right reason, stay away from the cokeheads. Right. <laughs> yeah. right. Just, all, that's the number one. Just stay away from the cokeheads and you're good, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. Good, like, fucking, stick with the weed smokers, really stay with the life. fuck away. <laughs> they told me like that motherfucker will take you to hell and leave you there. Wow. So, like yeah. do not follow that dude. <laughs> no matter how famous he is. Right? That's so funny. Go with the ganja dude, right? Like they will really like good, take care of They'll you. They'll never feed lead you, you wrong. Yeah, drive you home. <laughs> <laughs> we all love Wall Street. Do yeah. not go hang out with with Charlie, because <laughs> yeah. Charlie hangs out with Charlie. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. That's you got you had some sage advice, I think, yeah. along the way. You did yeah. get good advice. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Zach, was anything worth? Uh, we have we, yeah we have a couple of time. A couple of right. questions specific for him, and then a lot of like general mod questions we can save. Uh, if it's general, just general car questions, we'll save those. Uh, okay, Dusty Summit says at the time you were initially cast for uh, Tokyo Drift, did you have any idea how big the franchise could blow up, and what are some of the challenges in working on that set? Um, when we did Tokyo Drift, we were a direct-to-video movie. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, so it was, um, no, nobody really paid attention to us, and we were a small budget. Like, we were the, you know, the third of a franchise that nobody really cared about at that point. Yeah, that typically they, the third is sort of a wah wah. Yeah, and then the original cast the wasn't cast, there, yeah. right? And then they're like, who are these people? And they're like, what's the lead? It's like some guy you can't understand from the South. Right? <laughs> and you got like, what is, what, what, what is this movie, right? Like, And so um, I had no, like we, the Justin and I, we came from Better Luck Tomorrow. So we came from a place where, you know, we made the movie out of credit cards and we, you know, we, we were the crew, we shared our, 
wardrobe. We made, you know, it was a, it was a, it was a true independent film. So, so it felt like a way up. Oh, it felt dude, like a huge bump from that. Yeah. Dude, when Justin got hired for that job, he had an office on at Universal, and I remember looking at the rollaway chairs uh-huh. with wheels, and it was like the expensive ones, you know, those like those Eam chairs, yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> and then I was like, dude, they got those chairs here. <laughs> like, not the fold out chair. I'm like. You got that? And I'm like, that's they got a whole yeah. bunch. And then we walk into his office and every like, chair is a Herman go, Miller chair. Who's that guy? This is my assistant. I go, You got a male assistant? <laughs> He's a white man? I'm like Wow. And then we close they're like, Hey, it's good to meet you, sir. I'm like, Oh, sir. We close the door and I go, Oh shit. Go get Dude. me something, anything. Dude, <laughs> there's a refrigerator. He had a little refrigerator in yeah. his office, man. Like so, we I, we know where we came from, yeah. right? So the idea of this thing actually blowing up, or and, and and Han was not in the movie, by the way. So Han, let me go back to the like the origin of Han, is that Justin called me and said, "Hey, I'm directing this you know, movie called Fast and Furious Tokyo Joe." I was like, "Great," because there's no part for you. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> he goes, you're, you're calling a glove. Yeah, just, right. just want to let you know. Yeah, there's the bad guy, but <laughs> yeah. you, you don't look bad enough to be the bad guy, right? And I was like, okay. And, uh, they want Japanese anyway. And I was like, okay. And he goes, but the casting directors, Finn Hiller, are these huge casting directors. Why don't you come in and read for the lead, which has already been cast by you know Lucas Black, but come and just meet them because you'll never have that opportunity. But you know, I had no agent, and you know, uh-huh. I was like, you know, nothing, right? And uh, that was a great idea. So I went in and auditioned for that part. And then fast forward, uh, the script had a character named, I think it was named Phoenix or something. It was like one scene and it was an African-American character. They wanted to put like a rapper, like a Pharrell or something, get a cameo. And he's in the tuner bell scene. He throws the keys to like a skyline to the main character. Uh-huh. But then there was a character, Twinkie, that's played by Bawa. That was originally written for the guy in the middle. For okay. Joe, right? And the studio was like, hey, we got to fit our demographic. There's politics, and it's like, hey, we got, we're gonna yeah. cast Bow Wow for this, like, you know, and if it fit, and then, and then they're like, okay, now we have this other character, Phoenix. Like, we have the rapper. Who do we put in for that? Like, do we do Hispanic, Latino, or like, why is he in Japan? And then, to Justin's credit, and Jeff Kirschenbaum, who was one of the, the producers of that film, that went to UCLA with Justin at the time, mm-hmm. and um, was like, hey, why can't we put an Asian American? And like what Japanese like no 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 just like Cali LA vibe so, like you know they're general Asian yeah they're like unidentifiable yeah. Asian but like what does he do like the martial arts or like what is he <laughs> like, <laughs> what stereotype right. about Asians yeah. can he fulfill right because because it was <laughs> no, no no he's just a person <laughs> yeah who can talk really well and act really well I mean like, under, ah, all right, think okay. about it yeah, under the hands of somebody that didn't I think understand the lens of an Asian like person yeah. or Asian American person, Tokyo Drift would have just been Mr. Miyagi. Uh-huh. Because Neela, the girlfriend, would have been a Japanese girl. Mm-hmm. I mean, it would have been Karate Kid. It would have just been a Karate Kid with <laughs> wheels. That's a, no, right. God, yeah, I no, haven't yeah, actually heard right. it as Karate Kid, and now I can't unsee yeah. that shit. But a because of, of Justin, like, he's like, he was like yeah. fighting. He's like, the girlfriend, let's not make her Japanese. Let's make her expat. Let's put Asian American. Let's put this guy. Let's do this. Let's, let's keep flipping. The Southern guy was like, yeah. Justin was like, yeah, I'm going to fight for Lucas because it makes no sense, right? It's like flip everything upside down. And then when we were doing the movie, dude, it was funny because originally the script had Han smoking because I smoke in Barrel Luck tomorrow uh-huh. in that film, right? And uh, and I was like, nah, we can't do that. Kids watch this. So I, I was like, I watched um, um, Steve McQueen in Magnificent Seven and uh-huh. I watched the behind the scenes and I watched, you know, a Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt always eats. Yeah, yeah, Brad Pitt always eats. Yeah, and there was a great movies. explanation of why they do that to observe, to give an actor activity. Right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, mm-hmm. and Han never, if you really break down of how many times Han speaks, maybe like three <laughs> words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a lot, a lot oh. of a lot of uh, yeah. I'm eating chips. So what do you do? How do you stay busy? Like when yeah. it's focused on the two main actors, and I'm always in the bar. What do you do? Like, how do you act cool? You can't. Yeah. How do you act? What's the activity? So the that was like the perfect thing instead of smoking. Yeah, right. So it grounded the character, and then, dude, I remember one of the producers like grabbed the bag of chips from me, going, "What are you doing? These damn chips, bro!" <laughs> like it's just, like, sound issues, man. <laughs> 
<laughs> right? Fair. They make you yeah. eat like fucking paper to stop the sound like yeah. fake chips. Like oh yeah. But you can be expressive with the chips. I mean, it can you yeah. can add pause in. You can add like exactly. it's not just standing there going yeah. Oh gee guys, it's yeah. like ooh hot pause yeah. on the chip. Yeah, know. question. Yeah, right. Brad Pitt uses right. like yeah. apples and shit as comedic devices. Absolutely. I actually was on the elliptical machine this morning watching Ocean's Thirteen. That's right. how fucking he eats a lot of uh, shrimp cocktail in that movie. I think yeah. <laughs> he, he changes foods every shit. scene. But yeah. I think every it's scene in that movie he's eating. Yeah. <laughs> and it makes the Those character guys relatable. Figured out how to mm-hmm. make a movie, you know, man. When the character eats, right, you make you, you feel like like connected. That's why everybody always wants to have like a beer or like food with me. Yeah, I, I should get do to a have food a, show I get well. to have a beer with you a lot. <laughs> you want to do a food show? It'd be fun. Yeah, we should. Show. We should do worst food in America. <sighs> no, <laughs> you eat fucking that nasty shit. I'm not about that. You what? drive your uh, 914 with a 901 <laughs> with the worst transmission to the worst food in America. Yeah, I like worse food. I like that. I, oh, how about best institutional food? Oh, okay. I would fuck with that. Right? I like go eat school school yeah. food. Or, are you, wait, by institution, you mean schools or prisons? Yeah, schools, airplanes, okay. you know, like cafeteria food. I've seen some innovative hospital. on food sh- like shows. I've yeah. seen some pretty innovative school food in various, like, you know, interesting parts of the country that yeah. care about these sorts of things. Um, I just had a. Oh, do you know that? Uh, I at my uh, at my wedding last year, I literally had our, one of my friends get up in the ceremony and read the fucking grace from Fast and Furious One to two hundred people oh, with right. a total, no. yeah. totally deadpan. Really? Yeah. About forty people thought it was the funniest thing they'd ever seen. Everyone yeah, else did. was very yeah. confused. That's why it was funny because one hundred sixty <laughs> people were like. Why? What is he doing? <laughs> it's like, it's, like, it's like 18 words long. It's like not long. Uh, <laughs> so he gets, he, he, he walks all the way up. <laughs> that's the crazy. Tech. You know why that's crazy to me? Is that someone like you still is enthusiastic or in a way use like that's part of your like pop culture identity. Oh yeah. That's like, it's crazy. And then for me to like go, really? Yeah. Right? It's, it's, it's actually very like humbling. It's, it's like, it, well, it's trans, a little transcendent, yeah. you know? Yeah. It was, that was a fun. huge, like, you know, I, I grew up in Santa Cruz and I was into cars, but I was in like this muscle car club. Cause that's what, that's the car shows that were around in Santa Cruz when I grew up. Right. So everyone I knew that I was friends with that was in the, like in my circle was into old shit that was loud and slow, but like we thought it was fast. And then, and we were drag racing all the time. And then when Fast and Furious came out, I was a senior in high school, we went and watched that. But that woke a lot of us up to the import car scene. And for some, yeah. like I hadn't, I've never gotten import tuner, I'd never gotten any of that stuff. And then we watched those movies and then we started going, oh, those look cool, what are these things? And like jump ahead two years and half the guys that were in the muscle car club were now working at a Volkswagen tuner shop. And like, autocrossing and tr- and doing track stuff and they're like look these cars turn and like oh my god what a revelation but that movie was huge in expanding my car world for sure yeah it's pretty cool man it's pretty the cool the best thing ever for the first for the, for the first like f- at least 5 films was going to see them cuz me and my wife independently had a tradition of seeing them on opening night exiting the parking lot of a fast and furious screening is one of the great joys. Man. Or just standing there while others exit because everyone all of a sudden decides that they are in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> it is fucking just the craziest yeah. scene to see. It's pretty cool, huh? It is. It's fun. Yeah. It's good to be part of an institution like that that yeah. fucking eg- that that the energy continues once the movie is over, even if it's like obviously reckless and stupid still. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. That's amazing. I, I I wonder why people gravitate towards that car movie because there's a lot of attempts. I mean, there've been a lot of car associated movies. I, I, I think it yeah. felt attain uh, yeah. uh, attainable because, like at the time, there were movies that came out that were had good car chases. Yeah, like The yeah. Rock, Ronin, all that stuff. But those are like okay, one guy's a criminal and the other guy's you know a gun for hire and all this stuff. But these were. To me, it was like, all right. I mean, granted, there's a criminal element of the people in Fast and Furious stealing stuff, but the rest of the people in the movie are like, like these are people like that are just into people. cars, that built some shit, that go racing, you know. Yeah. And that was happening in L.A. F- way before the movie came out, and of course, it got bigger when after the movie came out. But it just felt like most of the people in the movie could be just like us. Yeah, this it's because of relate relatable characters, relatable cars. You yeah. know, yeah. I fucking love when my car friends from the East Coast come out here, and I can easily give them the the 
Fast and Furious uh, tour. Hollywood tour because yeah. a lot of stuff is kind of in, easy and around. Yeah. Um, it's a good. It's a good time. It's a good. It's a good cultural phenomenon to have, kind of based in your city. Yeah, I think it's fun. Yeah. Uh, Rent Schaefer says, "What's it like driving the Veilside RX-7?" <laughs> I imagine you just parked it. <laughs> no, that one when we did the uh, that. Uh, that collision scene. Uh-huh. We actually shot that in downtown LA. They just made it look like Tokyo. Yeah, and there's the Shinjuku where I get hit, side you know, by Jason Statham, which is fascinating, right? I did a movie with Statham pre Tokyo Drift, mm-hmm. and I had a little bit part, and I was part of his crew in this movie called War uh, uh-huh. with him and Jet Li. And we were in the airport leaving, to, you know, Vancouver, and he goes, "Hey, what are you doing now?" And I go, "I'm going to do this movie called Fast and Furious." He goes, "Hey." I want to be in that franchise. <laughs> like, that's a good thing to be in, Mike, right? And they're like, oh, yeah, okay, whatever. And it's like, I years that's later. Good th- years I hear that's later, good for your career. You know, years later, he's the one that kills hard, right? Or, that's uh, hilarious. Yeah. Uh, I knew Paul a little bit back mm-hmm. uh, in the day, and he would rent out Willow Springs yeah. uh, for his friends, and I'd get to go. And Statham showed up to those one of those ones mm-hmm. in a GT2, a brand new GT2. Mm, wow. And he was like, right. Uh, anybody got a helmet? <laughs> and I was like, uh, okay. And I handed him my helmet, and he went out on the track and he fucking sailed this thing off the first corner of Willow Springs oh, no. backwards, oh, no. and came back like a little dusty, and uh, some the some the wheel was a little dinged up or whatever. And he got out of the car, gave me the helmet, he goes right then, and got back in the car and fucking left. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing was like five words. Wow. It's crazy. Wow. But he, but he was the most masculine person I've ever fucking seen. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I'd like to hang out with you. I don't know why, but I think I have like a man crush on you yeah. for some reason. Yeah, he, 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 he makes you want to wear <laughs> musky cologne. <laughs> I'm serious. Exactly. Like, no, no, it is. Yeah, no, exactly. I think I need to be more man around. Yeah. Like Why is he so mad? He's bald, but he's more man than me. I got nice hair, but I'm gonna go do some curls real so quick. Manly, oh but he's not even the rock. No, he's not as big, but no, he's right, very dude. fit human but being. But manly. Like martial artist. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. bro. Cool. I sat right. next to fucking Tom Selleck on a plane once. He is like six foot five, uh, and he is the fucking thickest dude for for someone who's like you know what sixty five or whatever yeah. seventy whatever he is, and I was like holy shit dude this is this guy's like a tree he's a yeah. giant tree and he couldn't have been nicer I said hello and he was like, complimented his watch he was very nice but it, the, he had that like he had the old man strong voice yeah. where it just <laughs> got the fucking carry yeah you know <laughs> dude anyone guy. who can rock a mustache. <laughs> You're you're very manly. I can't do it, man. Like well, I, he committed. I, no, you know, that was his thing. You look like a Mexican. I try to grow a mustache. I try to grow a mustache. My mom goes, no. I go, why not? She goes, it looks like you're going to try to steal something. Yes. <laughs> oh, what? Your mom is <laughs> brutal. <laughs> Yeah, your mom is real. It's masculine. Rough, by the way. It's the growth. It's no the wonder you're an actor. You're like, there's no, there's no appreciation at home. Like, it's you just a, like you're not you good at anything. Cook? You look like shit. <laughs> you just, know Charlton Heston. Just go son. work in the back of a Seven Eleven as a notary. So <laughs> just you know. <sighs> That's amazing. Uh, I don't know what this question is, but it sounds good. Jason says, "What was your involvement with El Rey and producing a Baja Championship with Score?" Do you have oh, involved in an off-road racing? Yes, yes. I got a great opportunity by Robert Rodriguez, who owns oh, El yeah. Rey, who actually directed this movie. I got to work with him on a movie called Heroics, the out in studio in Austin. Um, but he owns El Rey, and they had a distribution contract for the Baja, you know, like televised version of it. And they needed like that, you know, voiceover guy, the, uh-huh. the ESP guy. Long ago, <laughs> four men. <laughs> on a journey across the desert, right? And I'm like, do I get to go to Baja? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, I'm in, bro. Yeah. Like, I want to go. So I got to go to 25500. I didn't drive, but I got to go learn. It's awesome, cool. right? And just to get to be there, right? So that, that was my involvement. Oh, okay. So I did all the voice. voiceover? Yeah. Yeah, you know. voiceover's fun. No, it's so fun. Show up in your pajamas. You yeah. can also show up with nothing. Nothing. Yeah. They you don't, don't even have to go anywhere. You they, do. don't, they don't like it, the technicians, but... <laughs> <laughs> Voiceover is the best gig yeah. ever. Zach, what else we got? That was it for him. Oh, that was it. It's a bunch of yeah, uh, like mod questions that. and stuff. Yeah, we can keep all the same garbage for later. 
dude, thanks for coming down. Well, thanks what a for great show. Me. This was really fun. enjoyed having Super you. Fun. Yeah, yeah, we should do it. May do it again, please. When you're especially when you're nine fourteen is up. You said SEMA next year. Yeah, but the doc, the 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 Z that uh, that Safari Z should be done. I think it should be done by Christmas. Oh, cool! Yeah, I'll bring it over. You can test drive. Come it. back into the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that'd be a cool, fun car to like drive around and test drive. Fuck and yeah! Stuff. And we'll yeah. stick it up on a rack. Get pictures of it in the air. It'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. That'd be good awesome. for good for the marketing. And yes. I definitely approve the steering wheel. Yes. Right? Where do you know where people are going to be able to buy these yet? Tactico. You can go on their website, so you'll see Tactico. It'll be a limited series called the Viceroy 914 steering wheel. I mean, it'll be you know only 914 available in the Viceroy. Kind of design, so but Tactico, the guys, they're out of Belgium, two nine eleven, just enthusiasts. They started this company, and everything is made in Italy, and it comes with the hub. So there's oh, cool. every hub for every car. Sweet, so, um, it's really cool. It's yeah. a very very pretty piece, and it is uh, really comfortable to have in your hand as well. Before you go, we got let's line this up on my Porsche. I want to see yeah, about the please. difference between because yeah. I I have a three fifty double wrap. Yeah. Um, which was a pain in the fucking but ass. Do you Apparently like wrap. small steering wheels? I don't like small. I want them bigger. No, but I, I like don't. the like the Alpha that Montreux with that yeah. big bus driver. That's like I love that feel. I don't love small steering wheels, but there's nothing I hate more. Not nothing, but I hated Porsche's '80s four spoke across steering wheel. Yeah, the stock wheel in my car. I hated it so much. Yeah. But it's, the 350s cover up your gauge, and that's why everybody has to. So does the fucking stock wheel. That's like the thing. Does it? <laughs> yes. The stock wheel. Well, I want to line too. this up because we designed this so it it has much more clearance for your. Which 911 do you have? Which one? Which Oh, the Safari one? That, the one oh, you yeah, just yeah, sat in. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be perfect. Yeah, yeah. It looks yeah. nice. I want to line it up. Thanks, man. Follow uh, Sung at Sung Kangsta on Instagram. Yeah. And what's what's the name of your YouTube channel again? Uh, is it Sung's Garage? Sung's Garage. Yes, there you go. Yeah, Sung's Garage. Uh, oh, and yes. it's on the link is right there. Uh, and uh, I'm glad you got to have a go in that Montreal. That's a good one. That's a fun one. That was great. Yeah, I, I can't don't, wait. I to don't try think your they seat. knew that I was going to drive it to San Francisco. Did, did they give you a mileage <laughs> limit? I don't remember. Who owns that car? Because I, <laughs> I don't a guy, know. Haggerty, a guy. But Haggerty, they're good people. It's a guy that Haggerty probably takes good but, care of. Uh, so, so when uh, the question is, do they give you the car to drive? So yeah. what is that? What's that definition? I don't remember. Good I did point. sign something. It was like a year ago, so I don't remember. But but as my mom said, <laughs> my English is not too good looking. I have I have like <laughs> <laughs> I've really occasionally I've really oh abused God. the mileage limits on certain cars, but <laughs> I've tried to. Be, we put I think in 2014 or 15 we put like 1,200 miles on an Aventador <laughs> in a week. Oh, we went to oh, Vegas. Yeah. Uh, I, we put That's we right. put twenty. I think we put twenty two hundred miles on the BMW One M Coupe when that came out, and I I no, think the no record, regrets because the the record was uh, the Shelby the GT three fifty R in twenty sixteen. We did twenty six hundred miles, and then this oh no this past summer I just did thirty seven hundred in a Lamborghini Urus press car. But the, the, but that's then then that says that you're doing like true yeah. like seat time. We were doing journalism, hard hitting, yeah. objective. That's right. Journalism. That's right. <laughs> Drive by driving cross that's country right. in a Lamborghini Urus. Uh, check out Sorted, my new show about tuner cars. Uh, you can go to sortedornot.com and see all the episodes, or go over to Rob Ferretti's Super Speeders Rob YouTube channel. But just go to sortedornot.com. It's awesome. And of course, if you need somewhere awesome to park your uh, collector or sports vehicle in Los Angeles, Westside Collector Car Storage has you covered. If you run out of room at your shop, we'll we'll hook you up. Thank you. With some space. Oh, I appreciate that. For this, the this is the space. This is. I asked you if you guys ever get the opportunity to come here. This is. Who, what, cool. Where is like? The, so where do you go when you die? If the, I mean, this is. I heaven. hope to be scattered here. Dude, this is <laughs> scattered into the exhaust fans. We this, talked about it. I want to be cre cremated and spun into one of those orbs. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah yeah. The, the make me into, yeah. yeah. Make me. Into, have you seen the orbs? Instead no. of giving you like a box of ashes. They you they give the box of ashes to a glass blower who uses your ashes and creates like a crystal ball or a whole thing with your like ashes in it. Really? It's easier to transport than a box of ashes. Wow. Yeah, I know it's weird as fuck. Yeah, that's yeah it's really strange. But yeah. I'll take here. Here's good. Yeah, this, this is, is good. This is yeah. great. Yeah, and until yeah. then, we'll be broadcasting from 
this fucking studio, which this I love. Thank cool. you for coming down. It was really Thanks, good man. hanging out in person, man. Thanks, Appreciate man. it. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Have a fabulous evening. See you. Uh, what do we got? We're doing a show tomorrow. Thursday, uh, remote call-in show with. Not Super Street. What is their uh, name? Um, uh, Speed Academy. Yes, Speed, Speed Academy. Academy. And Larry Casilla is calling, doing a call-in show on Friday of Ammo. Awesome. We have many shows. We will be recording many things. Good night. Bye.